Good morning, everyone. Terry Harden here, Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer. Welcome. It's Monday. How about that? As we are about to close the month of March and open with a beautiful April. April 1st is on the way here in California. I am very excited because as of April 1st, uh, vaccines will be open to my age group, which is 50 and older. Yay! <laughs> I know you're thinking, hey, why is somebody getting so excited about the vaccine? But if you have been protecting someone high risk in your family, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm very excited about that. Welcome. You saw in my thumbnail, I'm talking about a bit about Disneyland today. And you saw Mickey peeking. He's very happy because you're coming in a little over a month. Now, one of the things that I discussed on Friday, and I do AMAs every Friday, ask me anything every Friday. What I do on Fridays is we have these discussions. I try to give you a little bit current discussions, especially when it's your favorite park, Disneyland. Many of you need it like a blood transfusion, so I want to keep you up to date. One of the things we discussed was the fact that Disney's sitting back, and I don't mean they're sitting back in a lounge chair having bonbons and a coffee. What they're having is they're waiting with bated breath to see how much they can open. One of the articles I found on this amazing phone today I thought was very pertinent to help you guys out. And uh, one of the things was that um, if Disney opens right on the first, which we already know they not, if you're an amusement park, let me just say that if you're an amusement park, I've never really thought of Disneyland as an amusement park. It's more of a experience. That's what they call it. Disneyland, the experience, because it's all about your wonderful experiences. Whether you get lost and a cast member helps you find your family, you go and you have your favorite uh, uh, Dole Whip and you meet someone in line who's also about Dole Whip. Perhaps you bump into a family. I remember one time during the 50th anniversary, I bumped into a family from India. There were seven of them, and they had saved up all seven years just so the entire family of seven could go to Disneyland and spoke with them and visited with them and took pictures with them. I just came across them at the park when I was there one time. And it was just, a, it was it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Maybe you see somebody with a button that says, first time at Disneyland or happy anniversary or newlyweds. You know, this is the thing that Disney does that I don't think any other park really does as well as Disneyland. So we are all so eager <laughs> to get that park open again, aren't we? And one of the things I said about Disneyland sitting back till April 30th is that here in California, we are on a very nice little slide. And if we keep it up, we could beat this, this, this thing called the pandemic. And I hope that we do. Many of us are concerned because we're cross, we have uh, uh, spring break and a lot of people during spring break lose their minds. So we're praying that they don't. We're praying that they stay cool. But uh, today, or was it yesterday, uh, the uh, CDC announced that uh, these places like Disneyland, can have indoor rides open. You heard it, if you did not know this. So many of you mentioned that you want, you know, you want the whole experience of Disney. You can't, you can't think about going to Disney maybe without Pirates of the Caribbean or Haunted Mansion. Well, this says that right now, uh, California parks can open indoor attractions but must queue outside. Now, in the case of Haunted Mansion, this is a done deal, isn't it? It's already done. It's already outside, right? So no problem. It's when you get inside that they're going to have to do a little bit of work. So pirates, eh, it's going to have to do a little bit of work. But what I think is going to happen and what seems to be on the jungle drums, boom, ba, ba, boom, 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 ba, ba, boom, is that they're going to do the similar thing that they did with the Disney store, uh, World of Disney in uh, in city in their downtown Disneyland, okay, which is you kind of go, I guess, to a check-in place. I haven't been there, so correct me if I'm wrong, please. 
but uh, you you go and you sign up or whatever, and then your phone is alerted when it's your try, turn to go and ride that ride. Not too different from Rise of the Resistance, eh? Which eh, could be open too. Yeah, if indoor rides can be open, right? Right now, they're talking about 15% capacity. And this is not a lot. But as we get closer and closer and closer to the end of April, if we keep sliding down the, the uh, tiers list, we could be in a more open tier, which means Disneyland and other places can have more capacity before they even open. And this is one of the things that I discussed before the weekend, because this is a very smart thing. You can get the maximum if you have a little patience. Yeah. So if you can wait just a little bit before you throw open your doors after being open for so closed for so long, you may not have to work as hard with the CDC. And that's what Disney says. They will continue to work with the CDC at the best of their ability so that they can give you the best experience. And how nice would that be? That would be just so wonderful. Uh, uh, let's see. We will continue to communicate with state officials, they say, about guest and cat and staff capacities and as the COVID-19 rates decline. That's the line we want to keep hearing. COVID-19 declines. So that's pretty cool. You know, they're ready to reopen responsibly. Can't wait to wake up, welcome back employees and guests, and neither can I. So some of the guidelines I thought you'd be interested in, parks must create a weekly coronavirus testing program for workers. Face coverings must be worn at all times by workers and guests unless eating, which means you're not going to be able to walk and sip your soda, which many of you already know this because you can't do it in downtown Disney and you certainly couldn't do it at Knott's Berry Farm and you can't do it uh, uh, in um, Walt Disney World either. Performers who cannot wear a mask in the park must remain at least six feet away from other people. In-state visitors are only going to be allowed. And this, this part, which I feel for you if you're out of state, I really do, uh, because uh, I happen to have a very dear friend who really needs Disneyland and she doesn't live here. If I, if I could get her in in any way, I would because she really needs it. I know how much it means to her. Um, uh, visiting groups cannot include more than three households and you have to be a resident of the state of California, at least for the April opening, I think this is going to remain the same no matter what tier we do. I think they may keep that. Indoor rides are limited to no more than 15 minutes in duration. Queues must be outdoors. And uh, from and if you're from different households, you have to be six feet apart. This is a lot of policing that they've got to do. Same house must be boarded on the ride vehicle together. Different households, six feet apart in rides. Attractions must be closed if there's a high number of riders losing face masks during the ride. You see what it says here? So this is where Big Thunder could be a challenge, all right, is that if they find people are losing face masks while riding the attraction, they'll close it. So here's what you do. You know those, those hooks that go across the back that hold your mask on? That's what I'd be checking out. In fact, if I were you, Disney, I'd create a cute little Disney hook that locks that sucker in position. <laughs> Uh-oh, my imaginary mind is going crazy again. But wouldn't that be great, guys? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, face coverings must be available to off, you know, because you've got to give them to riders who lose their, their face covering should it fall off during the ride. Now, I spoke about this on Friday. I'll speak about it again. For those of you who are new and those of you who aren't watching it live, feel free to comment and let me know what you think. But uh, uh, if it's a Disney mask, people will be losing it like crazy. I don't care if you, 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 you weld it on, right? <laughs> so Disney, you got to be a little careful. You got to be a little careful. I would make them generic. You give them to people generic, generic, generic. But in your stores, which I know you've already thought of this before because you are Disney, just have ones they can buy too that are really cool. Lots of fun characters because you know they'll grab them up 
I would. Um, so there you go. Eating and drinking will only be allowed in designated areas and not in the queues. So uh, this allows indoor rides to open and it's really good news for Disneyland as where my husband works, which he is a producer cameraman. So he's not in the field, but Universal is talking about opening. So those of you who love Harry Potter, score. <laughs> so it's very exciting. Um, I want to give credit to the person who wrote this article for the Los Angeles Times. That would be Hugo Martin. He's a staff writer. And thank you, Hugo, for helping me uh, be able to let you guys know about Disneyland and how it is constantly, right? It's just it, that wheel is starting to get momentum. And before you know it, you guys will be flying, okay? So I'm excited for you. I'm super, super excited for you that this is, this is going to be happening. I mean, I'm just... I'm stoked, guys. I think it's very exciting. Um, I probably will. I, wait, what am I saying? I'll probably wait. I'll, I'll most likely wait. And the reason is because I know how much you guys need it. But I will live vicariously through you by, you know, post your pictures and I'll see how empty Disneyland is and go, yay for you. You get to experience it. And I'll cheer you every step of the way. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Don't know why Mondays I need to blow my nose, but I do. Uh, so yay for you. Just, just right spot on. Yay for you. Okay. This is happening and we're getting back to normal. And I hope that we don't backslide. I keep praying that we don't backslide. But the nice thing is, I hesitate to say this, but backsliding is a little harder to do because more and more and more people are getting vaccinated. I think it's quite brilliant that, uh, Mm. Bravo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's quite brilliant that, that, that they are opening it up as of April 1st and then by the 15th, everybody gets it. Because then, you know, with spring break happening now and, and you know, there was craziness in Florida last week, but the spring breaks kind of go through April a little bit and so on and so forth. That if we're getting all getting vaccinated, we could prevent an outbreak and that would be so nice. It just so nice. I mean, aren't you guys going, I mean, you know, I like my home and I love being with my husband and I love being able to work here and do a lot of fun stuff, but I miss um, going out and being with people, being with you guys. I mean, seriously, um, in a, a thing like the Zoom call, like I do on my Patreon page and stuff like that, people tend to listen more than speak. And I love a conversation. It's just natural because the little window on Zoom, you guys have probably all done a little bit of Zoom. The window on Zoom tends to kind of, you know, just, it's not the same. It's not the same. I mean, you know, and then these lives are not the same. You kind of feel like you're, you know, you're, are you out there, out there, out there? I know you're out there, but the point is, is you know what I mean? It's just not the same as having a, a tea or a coffee opposite you. Speaking of which, I think I'll make myself, I'm going to make myself another cup of tea. So, uh, but seriously, that's one of the challenges that we have every day. Oh, good. It's still hot. Thank you. Um, that's one of the challenges that we have every day. And um, and we just miss. We just miss, miss, miss. Sorry. Miss not being able to sit all together, having a coffee, a sandwich or something at the Earl of Sandwiches, and uh, all just giggling and making a joke and chiming in at the same, you know. Yeah. Those that sit quietly can at least smile at you, you know. So, uh, yeah, that's what I, I kind of miss. That's what I'm feeling. That's what makes me a little bit on the, uh, sad side. So miss you guys, basically. That's what I'm saying. I miss you. Okay. All right. Here we are. So. So that's what I'm thinking. That's what I'd like to have. That's what I'm doing. Meanwhile, uh, I'm having a super, super great time. So there's a couple things I want to share with you. Look, there's this one dreadlock trying to say, hi, how's it going? 
Uh, a couple things I want to share with you. I want to give you a quick shot of, uh, you know, I'm always saying do something new, try something new, have some fun doing something new. Well, um, I decided to do a painting. I've been sharing it with my my friends on Patreon. And uh, again, if you want to join us, your voice is very important. Please go here and check me out on the page. $5 a month and you can have uh, two Facebook Lives. They happen before uh, my Mondays and Fridays. They happen before this one. And then on Wednesdays, we do an 11 o'clock Zoom call because I hunger, hunger for conversations with you. And I always love having conversations with you. But also, I've been sharing a bit with them and uh, chatting with them uh, as far as I've been painting. And I'm going to just kind of show you. Uh, I've never... Okay, so how did this happen? In a nutshell, my uh, husband bought me these amazing paints and I needed to figure out how to use them, plain and simple. So I got a teacher trained and I'm almost done. So just gonna show you the end result really quickly. Here it is. There's my painting. Um, I'm painting in acrylics, it's my first time. Uh, my process went a couple of ways. First of all, I used too much gray. You'll see it has a gray background here. And I fought with the gray because it looked like I hadn't painted at all, my gray and my hair versus the other. So I, I painted a green. And today I'm probably gonna change that background. I have two more days to finish this painting. But uh, basically I've never painted before. I'm pretty proud of it because it looks like me. I mean, you know, doesn't it look like me? <laughs> The idea was to get a photograph and paint from a photograph. And I also had life to paint from, but now I'm eager to paint something else. I have uh, a couple of paintings that are ideas that I really need to get my skills up first before I can execute them onto. And I could do them over and over again, which I feel that is probably going to happen. But, um, but you just want to try something new. And then if it, it gets you like, this is getting me, I'm really, I'm really loving it. And I have more, more paint left. <laughs> I barely used any, which was one of the shortcomings. It said I should use a little bit more paint. Um, I think I did great. Um, I mean, you know, for my first painting and there is a lot of painting in there. You can see. And one of the things I like to do is I want it to look like it's painted. I'm a little uh, uh, serious about that. My teacher is a realism painter. And I, I mentioned today that when I stand back from her paintings, it looks like a photograph. And I just don't want photo real. It's just not my thing. I, I realized it. I, I thought in the beginning, maybe that is my thing because I'm so realistic. You know, I'm very, very accurate with my Disney sculptures. And when I do portraits of people, I'm spot on with my sculptures, but it's different. It's the sculptures... Sculpting is just different and, and, uh, uh, yeah, it's different, but, uh, anyway, it was very exciting. It's very exciting to do that. Um, I'm not done yet. I'm going, like I said, I'm going to change this background because this was just to throw in a color so that I could make sure when I painted my dreadlocks that they looked painted instead of not painted. <laughs> And that gray background, as you can see back here, just really fools you. The other thing is the painting process. I'm not so sure the steps, the way she paints, are the way I will end up painting. Because we painted, for example, we painted uh, elements. We started with an eye. So here is my eye. That's how we started, was with an eye. She taught us how to paint an eye. And then after we painted the eye we painted a pair of eyes. You see what I'm saying? So I don't know if that's the way I'm going to go. The old masters used to block out the figure, you know, if it was a full on figure, if it was a portrait or whatever, they, they worked the big painting. And since in sculpting, I tend to work kind of intimate, it might be nice to free. It might be freeing if I can do the whole thing. So that's kind of what I'm looking at, but it may be that I create a hybrid between. But why am I telling you all of this? Why is this so important? Because, let me just adjust my camera. I'm always doing that to you guys, aren't I? Um, because you're, you're finding yourself. You're searching for what is your style? 
You want it to be your style. One of the things I'm a bit obsessed with is that I want you to be able to look at my work and know that the work is mine. That's a Terry Hart, okay? Because I don't want you to think it's a, there's a lot of people out there that do Disney illustrations and people go, wow, that looks like a Mark Davis. That looks like a Mary Blair. That looks like a Rolly Crump, yeah? And I don't want that. I want it to look like me. And that's just, I don't think it's narcissistic, but it's a bit obsessive. And the reason it is, is because it makes you strive to find what is your style. So for example, many of you have noticed that Jannie G, uh, she posts here, she's part of my tribe as well on Patreon. And one of the things that I love about her is I could see her paintings from the moon and know they're Jannies. And this is what I like. This is what I want. There was an artist years ago, my mother loved to create, collect a cartoonist named Robert Marble. And she, boy, you can tell marbles from a million away, a million miles away. Bev Doolittle, have you seen her? The one who used to do the integrated stuff. In fact, if you're a fan of The Last Dinosaur or whatever that movie was from Disney, if you liked that, there was a sequence where a character comes out from the trees. The minute that character came out from the trees, I said, oh, somebody likes Bev Doolittle. So that's the kind of thing I want. You know, I think painters in general, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think you, you in the beginning, as a beginner, you may strive to duplicate the styles and you learn from it. Okay. One of the things I love to do um, as an artist is to sculpt old masters. And now I want to paint some old masters paintings. In Paris, I, I walked around and saw many people in museums with the easels up working to duplicate the, uh, an old master painting that they loved. And I think I would enjoy that very much. I think I would enjoy the whole training experience and I would definitely be opposite Renoir, Rembrandt, uh, Degas, because when you look at their work, you know it's theirs. Michelangelo, of course, my favorite. But Michelangelo, I have to say, I love his painting, but I've been a super fan of his sculpting. So this is just a quick little blurb, if you will, to uh, share with you my thought processes on the thing that I tried. I also build with Legos. And I've met a couple of people who have come up with some really great ideas when it comes to what they're doing with Legos. And, and I'm impressed. And I come across other people who have created these little scenes, uh, little vignettes, things that they can put on a bookshelf that, that recreate some things that they admire and they love. And I love it. I love seeing it every single day. In fact, there's a show on KTLA 5, which is my favorite uh, local news station. And there's a show that's hit and miss with me. It's called LA Unscripted. My husband says they don't have a lot of bucks. So what drives me a little crazy is they kind of went and runs a lot faster than made me happy, but it is the pandemic. What are they going to do? But they, there's an artist who is a food artist and she, they featured her and it was really amazing. She took cutouts of the upper portion of celebrities and then she duplicated their gowns using food, avocado, lettuce, uh, kiwi. Oh, just, just beautiful work, beautiful work. So I love seeing that. Not that I'm going to, you know, try to do it because it's just not my thing. And I don't want to copy her. I just, I just loved what she did. Now I might copy her if I had somebody who really would have loved her, couldn't afford her to do it. Maybe as a, for a friend, I did it or taught them how to do it, whatever. But you know, when you look at it, you go, I remember that's that girl that was on LA Unscripted, even if you don't remember the name, you see, you follow me. So that's kind of the, that's kind of my thought, but this pandemic has been a great time to kind of reflect on what's important to you, isn't it? Um, and which many have realized what's important to them is family. Yeah, family's huge. Where maybe before family might not have been that huge. You know, you travel, travel, travel. You kind of high five each other while you're traveling. <laughs> we all get routines. We all get into our routines, right? But by the same token, you know, you sit at home. I remember the day of the lockdown around this time, right? This time last year. 
the bars were down, weren't they? And I sat with my husband and said, wow, I'm so glad that I'm trapped on this island with you. Yeah, yeah. So family can be important. You can kind of say, hey, you know, me traveling all over the world, me buying a bunch of stuff. Many people wrote to me and said that they wanted to correct, collect art, not tchotchke. Okay, they didn't necessarily wanted to fill their house with things that were easily broken or weren't painted well or weren't created well, but actual art, more like investing in things that they could hand down to family or sell later if they got in a bind or whatever. And I think this is great. They discovered new adventures. You know, if you like to read, maybe you got some more books or maybe you're like me, you sat down, didn't happen a lot but explored new uh, books that are on my shelf. I've got some great ones that I read, but I, I have a challenge with retaining, which I don't apologize for because I can see a movie. So for example, what movie did we watch? I hadn't watched in forever. Superman. Okay, with Christopher Reeve. Oh gosh, I, I remember where I was, what I was doing when I watched that movie. I was in the Chinese theater, and when that whole thing opened with the John Williams soundtrack, it was absolutely exciting. John Williams, I think, did the soundtrack. If I, you know, if I'm wrong, correct me, please. <laughs> but the intensity of the beautiful music, the the amazing uh, Superman, you know, made made me really believe in Superman. And uh, uh, just the whole thing was just dazzling, just just dazzling to me. And I loved it. And I had not seen the movie in years. And there were portions I remembered, but portions I also had not remembered. That experience in them again was great. That's me. I have to have seen a movie like quite a few times before I can remember it scene to scene to scene to scene. And all I have to do is stay away from it a while and woof, it's gone because there's other things wanting to occupy my brain pan. So, so it's wonderful to re-experience movies over again and remember where I was at that time. You know, uh, Star Wars doesn't do that because I saw it 181 times, like in the theater. So I know it pretty well. I know it pretty well. And I love the mistakes in it. I love everything around uh, A New Hope. I love everything about it. Uh, the uh, the effects that aren't quite great. The uh, acting that's not perfect. Every little nuance about it makes me very happy. And I love, love, love this film. So, and Empire Strikes Back, which just knocked me for a loop. I saw that one 97 times. And then Jedi, which I didn't see a lot because it kind of, mm, there were things I liked, but things I didn't. And, uh, but Star Wars is the reason that I'm, I'm Walt Disney's legendary Imagineer, that I am a trademark artist, that I have spoken all over the world, that I've met so many people. It's all because of a little film named Star Wars and a young girl who was bullied and teased because of being mixed and because of her hair being all weird and just kept going just never giving up. In fact, today on the news, I heard that USC, is it USC and UCLA are both vying for the, the uh, uh, March Madness, which I love the name, but I have no interest in sports whatsoever. But I am excited when an underdog uh, has the opportunity to do something they've never done because they just don't give up. So I'm rooting, always rooting for the underdog, even if it's in something that I'm not that interested in. So so, because it was me, it was me constantly kicked, constantly pushed, constantly being told by my grandparents, not my parents, that, uh, being an artist was a waste of my time and that I should get real and stop being a baby and stop being selfish. Correct me if you haven't heard this. Uh, <laughs> um, and I just, I just, la, 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 you're not going to tell me what to do with my life. Okay. Keep me safe. But grandparents, no. You're not going to do it to me. I remember standing defiantly in front of my grandmother. I was about 12 years old and said, you will not do to me what you've done to my mother. You know, 12 years old. Just imagine, 12 years old, hair sticking all out. Like the opening character in Up, 
Okay. If you look at those two characters, I wept through the whole thing because the, the, the young man looked as much and, and me, I looked like the girl and my husband looked like the guy. And I just wept through that whole front part of that movie, but my hair stuck in every direction. And I was that dreamer, that, that person who built things, who created things from nothing from the first time I held a pencil. So this is me, that personality, that person. And I've always been this way. And I always thought everybody else was too. And I'm realizing that you are not. And I want to help you get there. So this is one of the reasons I do these Facebook lives is to tell you, you have the right to get what you want, but you have to fight for it. It's not enough to dream. You can't sit in the corner and pray and namiaho ringe kyo and read the secret. It's not enough, guys. You, you know, God will say, are you worthy? Because you got to fight for it. You can do it. You can. I always say, if I can do it, you can do it. And I am here to give you all of the support. I am your personal cheerleader and the ignition to your wet gunpowder. If you can't get that started, then, you know, reach out to me. And, uh, and I'm happy to chat with you. Okay. And I'm happy to chat with you here. My AMAs are available. You can ask me about personal stuff from you. Like, how do I, okay. You can start with how do I, or I am challenged with blank. Terry, how do I, you can do that. You can post that in the comments. I will answer you. Okay. I will not la 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 you. Okay. <laughs> All right. So one more thing I wanted to share with you uh, on my AMA last Friday, many of you said you'd like to be a part of the chalk walk. What is the chalk walk? It's not chalk as in that fun stuff you draw on sidewalks. It's C-H-O-C for Children's Hospital of Orange County. And uh, we're having a virtual walk on May 22nd, which means anywhere in the world you can walk for charity if you like this charity and it sounds good to you. What I want to share with you is if you want to join the team that I am a part of, many of you wanted to join the team that I am a part of, and I highly recommend it because Sharon, who is our captain, and many of the ladies who help her with captainly duties, and you know, it takes it takes a village, so... One of the best groups of people I have knowing here is the M. I get your phone out, take a picture. I'll wait. Do 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 do. I did this on Patreon too. Do 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 do. It has to be the Jeopardy theme because who didn't love Jeopardy, right? <laughs> I could never play Jeopardy, but. Uh, one of the sweetest, uh, uh, most fun things. So that down that soon. But anyway, take a picture of this. All you have to do is go to chalkwalk.org. Put this in the in your you know, and search engine chalkwalk.org slash Mickey's O U A C Walkers. Now, if the capital M doesn't work, do a little M. I just did that so that you could kind of see what it is, but I think it, it works both ways. Actually, I think I've done it both ways. You get an amazing little Mickey mask of Mickey in a mask. Isn't that funny? A mask of Mickey in a mask that they design. I'm telling you, spoils you rotten. May 22nd, you can also join us for bingo every Saturday, sometimes on Sunday, if you want. Uh, it's just fun. It's just, I can't say it enough. If it turns out that it's something that you're not really that interested in, but you want to throw a couple of bucks my way, you can go to chalkwalk.org and put Terry Harden in the search engine or slash Terry Harden may get you there. But uh, I know many of you on Friday were asking me, how do I get to be a part of the team if I want to join? And we'd love for you to join. And don't let water make you think that you can't do it. Meaning that two or three people are from uh, uh, Great Britain. So they're going to be walking in Great Britain. We're going to be walking here in the U.S. So you, you're not tied. This is the good thing about the virtual walk. You could be anywhere in the world, gang, and be a member of this team. So I highly, if you want to do it, 
do your virtual walk. And the beauty of the chalk walk is you can do it in a scooter. You can do it with a cane. You can do it with a walker. You can do it walking backwards. You can do it hopping. It doesn't matter. It's not like most races where you have to be your little feet and you're running, right? You can walk. Of course you can walk. But I mean people of all walks of life, blind, deaf, okay? Everybody is welcome in the Chalk Walk, which makes this such a beautiful experience, the best I've ever been involved in. So I want to encourage you to be a part of it. Yes, we would love to all be in Disneyland and making it happen. But since we cannot, this is the next best thing. And it helps children who are really battling horrible stuff to get better. Okay. So yeah, I, I encourage you to be a part of it. If you so choose, I'm not going to twist your arms. I'm in isolation. <laughs> so I see by the hour that uh, we've been going for a bit, or I've been going for a bit. Let's see how you guys are. Let's go take a look at your uh, comments, and uh, we'll bounce back and forth. More and more of you are saying hello and commenting, and so I kind of like this right foot in, right foot out kind of thing. Whoa! So, uh, yeah. So I like to jump in and see you right away. May Yang, how are you, my dear? Hello. Angie's in the house. Hello. Yes, we start the week off right, don't we? How was your weekend, guys? My weekend, I, I as you know, I painted. And then my husband uh, is got his new passion, which is coffee. So we went and found a roaster, which happened to be in our town, which was wonderful. And uh, I got a new coffee experience. You know, uh, it's just... When somebody finds something they really love and you see that light go on, ah, makes you know why your teacher's out there because that never gets old. Um, good morning. Hello, Bonnie. There she is, our Bonnie. Morning glory, says Tracy. Grim greeting, Tracy. Good morning, one and all from Kurschmeister. Good to see you, my friend. Good morning. Good morning from Susie. Susie. Now, Susie is one of the village, not the village people. No, not why, no, 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 no. Get your head out of that. Get away from that song, okay? <laughs> Susie is part of the village of the OUAC walkers. She's one of the people that helps quite a bit. And uh, uh, it's always great to see her name and her help. She helped, they all, I'm telling you, this is a great group. So please join us if you wish. Uh, theme park gals. Hi, Terry. We will probably not be going to Disneyland right away when they open. Need to see ticket prices, crowd safety, etc. cetera. Uh, you bring up a good point, theme park gals. Uh, turns out it looks like they're going to not make it a park hopper ticket. No bouncing between parks for obvious reasons. I'm sure you figured this out. I'm sure not just the theme park gals, but everybody figured this out. Because if I figured it out, I go, everybody figured it out. But uh, but they're not going to do that, and it looks like they're going to keep the prices like they were before the pandemic, which is high. So like the theme park gals say, there's a few things to weigh before you jump right in. However, if you have to pay those prices anyway, why not go when it's a little bit empty if you've never experienced it? Take it from one who has been in the park when it's been completely empty. As a Disney artist and Imagineer, I have gone there on various occasions where it's just me and the cast members or me and a small group of Imagineers and the cast members. What I'm saying is you want 50%. It's like 1% just us. And most of the time what we'll do is we will suggest that the cast member who has to escort us around the park when it's closed, Uh, we'll do it in the morning when you're coming to work. Because as a cast member, I think the last thing you want to do is to stay late after your shift and take care of us. Maybe I'm overthinking it, but I remember any time I went into an attraction to study it, sketch it, create it for Disneyland, that I asked if I could do it in the morning when the cast member was coming to work. That way, 
they they're they're there they got to start their day we got to chat do our thing and then they went to work and i just think that's better than you know you've put in a full day and you're like tired and then oh my now i got an escort on imagineer around i don't know maybe you're happy maybe you're not but theme park gals you make a very good point we went to downtown disney yesterday they were not regulating crowds in the shops it was scary oh see Okay, see, this is what I'm worried about. Okay, this is what makes me nervous. The theme park gals are coming up with a very, very real discovery. Weekends, no. No, no. What's that sign? No, don't go on the weekend. If you have to, think it over. Do like they did. Run, Luke, run. If it turns out that, I don't know what it is, but in my town, I have a bakery called Porto's. People love this bakery. Okay. This bakery is like Starbucks to many people. They love this bakery. And I think this bakery has maybe two stores. That's it in Southern California. And on weekdays, everybody has a brain. Everybody's social distance. Everybody's polite. Everybody follows the rules. But on the weekend, all bets are off. They crump, they clump together. They're on top of each other like ants. And I don't understand the difference. Why can't you behave during the weekend as well? Let me say that again. Not you. People. Why can't people? But it's true. We went to the coffee roaster and luckily there's coffee people in the world. But how many are really rivet counters? They're out there. Okay. Just like there's rivet counters like you with Disney, right? You guys know the history, the dates, the dialogue, the, the, the details, okay? Nothing wrong with being that. But we went and looked for an actual coffee roaster because my husband wanted to talk to somebody who really knew coffee. That's someone who roasts their own beans. And this woman, she's amazing. She has her own shop. Roasts her own beans, creates her own coffee. And so my husband could have a conversation with a artist that might just mentor him a little bit with her thoughts. And right now she was a little bit trepidatious because who knows who's coming in there. Maybe we're going to force our thoughts on her, even though my husband is learning. He was very excited to meet someone like her. And she suggested two coffees that she makes and wants my husband to taste those and then come back and they will have a dialogue about what he thought about the coffees and she will give him other coffees based on his own palate. Doesn't that sound cool? It's like going into an art store and talking to somebody about paint or getting with me if you're a sculptor and we talk clays. Because if you're trying to learn about a clay as a first person to use, if you want to learn sculpting, you should be coming to me because I know a lot of flipping clays. As an Imagineer, I could just snap my fingers and pick any clay I want, any clay I wanted to research when I was at Imagineering. Now I can still do it a little bit, but I have my favorites. Okay. And depending on your level, are you a beginner? Are you intermediate? Are you curious? Are you a sculptor who's curious about learning something new? Wax. Uh, I'm your girl to talk to. Yep, that's true. So as they talk about here, the theme park gals are talking about how they left. This is the discipline you must do. Until we are all vaccinated, we have to still exercise on the side of caution. If you really don't want to backslide in your town, you cannot be a part of this anthill, okay? Just don't. That's That's... Simple, 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 easy. Michael says, do you think they will use the stretching room in the Haunted Mansion? If not, how will they get people down? Yes, Michael, I do. As of today, they will use the stretching room. But you guys, you know how they say to move to the center? You'll probably be like this. You'll probably step one foot in and there'll probably only be people that are one foot from the back wall in a circle. And then you have to, like, if you were to look at the elevator room from the air, you would have to trajectory the six feet rule. But that's why it's so interesting 
that they have the alert that even the theme park gals told me about. And I think maybe it was, I'm trying to remember who else told me. I think it was Leslie who told me, may not have been Leslie, but I think it might've been Leslie who said that you get a, 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 you, you, you check in with your phone and then your phone is alerted like through a text message or something when it's your turn to go to the shops, you can walk around and keep your distance and whatever. It sounds like a good plan in Disneyland. It's gotta be the master plan. I'm thinking that might be, Maybe it'll be a combination of both, you know. Remember that Disney designed one of the greatest uh, parking structures in the world. It's the most genius parking structure I've ever seen. If they can do that and some of those attractions that you know and love, they're going to get this for you guys. You're going to have a great experience. You're going to have a lot of fun. The one thing you've got to work on is remember not to hug when you go see your favorite cast members because you will. And you're going to want to hug them, aren't you? I know I would. And I forget. I, you know, we forget. It's not that we intentionally want to do wrong. It's just sometimes we forget. We're so excited to see our friends, Yee! you know, and then you got to remember six feet, right? And you can see it, man. You can see it. You can see it on TV. You go, whoa, whoa. How many times does a person hold a microphone up to someone who's removed their mask and then turn it to them to speak in a new situation? Uh, dudes. <laughs> so just remember, it's not all intentional bad behavior. It's forgetfulness because we're so hungry to be with our friends. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's important. But it's coming if we just hang in there. So Michael, yes, I think the elevator will be used. Uh, let's see. Bonnie says she's curious. Tickets will be the same price. I feel tickets will be extremely difficult to get. Would love the experience at though 15% capacity. You know what it's going to be like, Bonnie? It's going to be like uh, Disneyland will do this because they're not stupid. And I've said that a million times. They're not stupid. They will announce to you somewhere, someplace. And let's make a pact that if we hear about it, we tell each other. We share it with each other. Okay. Yes, you know, but you're going to have to just hit that button. You're going to have to be on your computer or your phone or your device and just keep, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. Don't give up. Now, here's the thing. I am curious, like Bonnie is curious about the ticket prices. They're saying that the, they kept the ticket prices the same at Walt Disney World and many Walt Disney World people say there's not a lot for the price. It's not worth it. Okay. Too much stuff is closed, but they opened very early. Disneyland's open a lot later, so maybe more stuff will be open, hopefully. But here's the deal. Uh, keep hitting, keep going. And how long, you know, will Disney allow you to book into for the rest of the year? Which means if you're in that first and you're willing you know, you're open to dates. Like if you live here, I would just, I'll just go on and say anytime. <laughs> Except for I really wouldn't want a weekend because I don't know what it is about people on the weekends. But anyway, you, you could do that. But the regular price of the ticket, you're going to look at that ticket. What is it now? What is the price of a ticket before the pandemic? I had a pass. I was a pass holder. So being a pass holder, a little different, as you know. And, um, so I don't even know what a, a, a ticket is for, you know, getting in for the park. I haven't done that in years. So for us pass holders, that's going to be a little weird too, but they won't have, they're not going to have annual passes, are they? No, they're not. So it's a good point. It's a good point. That could be a deal breaker for some, right? And not for others. Yep. Mask holders with ears. Yes. Now, Marissa, great idea, but you should sell it. Okay. Not Marissa should sell it, but Disney should create something like that for people to buy. Now, the problem with the ears, though, is you can't ride them on a big thunder because they will catch the wind and disappear. So you need to be careful with what people can and cannot wear on the attraction. But basically, as long as you have a mask that clips in the back, 
And maybe, maybe as Disney, you create g- generic little clasps in the back and you do it. I don't know if Disney has the ability not to make it a cool thing. <laughs> you know, can they resist making it completely generic so people aren't saying, I lost mine, I want a mask, you know? Tell me you're not going to do that if it's branded. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Disney needs to sell their branded masks. Their branded mask holders, which could be, you know, Mickey stretched holding, holding each part of the mask. You know, go across your head. It's Mickey, you know, or Minnie or Donald or Tigger. Yeah. Yeah, they could do that. So, uh, but it should be for sale. Yeah, it should be something you buy because otherwise everybody's going to lose their mask. (laughs) I know you guys, you will. (laughs) Not being able to hug the characters would be interesting too. Well, I'll tell you, we did Chalk Walk last year and uh, you, you, not last year, not, not pandemic year, but 2019. And a lot of the times characters like the princesses and things like that were up above us and we could wave to them as we walked under the, the bridge. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be weird. It's going to be very, very weird. Um, you could stand in front of them and kind of take a picture and stuff. Uh, but there were so many massive groups that they, and, and such a small footprint. I hate to keep reemphasizing this, but we have a small footprint at Disneyland. So they didn't want bottlenecks of people trying to stand in line and get pictures with characters. You had to, you had to really, you know, you could you could kind of stand in various places and, and get those pictures with the characters as best you could. Um, in some cases, especially in California Adventure, they have little coves where you can kind of have a queue and get pictures with characters while running, but or walking. But uh, the point is that uh, yeah, it's going to be weird in the beginning. Hi, how you doing? You know, I, people do the elbow thing, but I have never seen three foot elbows. So that bothers me too. Yeah. You do not have, this is not, I don't know anyone other than a spider who has this length about three feet. So this elbow thing that people are doing, it doesn't qualify in my opinion. So please be careful. If you've got a vaccine and you got a mask, maybe the elbow thing works, but, but be careful guys. We're, we're so close. I'm sure they will be generic. That's what I say, Steve. I mean, it would be crazy if they weren't, right? Because, you know, <laughs> Disney brands everything. Think about it. They do. They like to brand. I mean, and why not? Why not? Right? Remember the paper popcorn buckets? People saved those. So there you go. And why shouldn't you? I miss my Disney peeps. I do too. I really do. I'm serious. Miss you, Terry. I do miss you too, June. Miss you guys. Is this, you know, and, and people are like, well, if you say you miss somebody, you know, blah, blah, blah. We miss, we miss the, we are, I mean, there, there's people out there that hate people. That is so not me. Um, If you've ever seen the movie, uh, Harold and Maude and, and Maude says, I love people. They're my species. You know, you just, you just, just that, that sums it up. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. In fact, my dog is starting to feel that pull, uh, dear rocket, bless her heart. She is the funniest little dog. Uh, she has been able to tell she's very smart dog. My little dog rocket. And Rocket has the ability to, um, I'm just going to look here really quick because I want to show you what she looks like. In case some of you don't know what my dog looks like. I'm looking to see if I can find her. Well, there's a, there's like stylized pictures that my husband has done, but let me just, let me just go to my albums again because I know I show my, my dog off in my albums. So anyway, get to the bottom. There she is. This is her very young dog, but you get the idea. So there's Rocket. <laughs> That's her as a little puppy, <laughs> as a baby. My dog as a baby, but uh, it's a cute picture, so I'll I'll share it with you. Uh, she has come to 
obsessively want to go out in our front yard because she has a really good friend named Bella, which is one of those uh, spaniels, but it's a, I think she's a Cocker Spaniel actually, but she's an American Cocker Spaniel. I could be wrong. She could be one of the other kind of, of little Spaniels. The one like has polka dots, not little dots, but the big a something Cocker. I'll remember it in a minute. But anyway, Bella goes for her walk just about every single day and Rocket has like a sixth sense about it and has to come out and say hi to Bella. And uh, they say they say hello to each other through the fence because it's the pandemic. But my gosh, you can just see just like us, she really misses that interaction. So, yes, June, I miss you as well. Theme park gals, we are concerned about prices until we actually see what they come out with. We only speculate. Exactly. I'm hopeful that they'll eventually take care of their loyal and do us right on prices. One can only hope. <laughs> It's a scary thing, right? It's a it's a kind of a scary thing. So, you know, because they they have, you know, when you hear they've lost billions, but they also had their Disney Plus, which is doing well. And also we saw the percentage in what kind of 4,000% they're making on their tickets or whatever before the pandemic. So, I agree. I'm learning with acrylics too. Looks amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So Catherine, uh, uh, yes, chat with me a little on your acrylics experience. And uh, if you feel bold enough, post it. And you can like messenger it to me if you don't want to post it for everybody. I want to post it for everybody because holy moly, it looks like me. And second of all, um, wow. Wow. It's, it's cool. It's really cool. Um, I'm excited for my next endeavor. In fact, I've been looking and trying to decide what am I going to pay? I love animals, but uh, I'm just looking around to see what is it that I want to paint. I don't want to, I may take a class class once the pandemic lifts and I can paint from life. But uh, yeah, it's hard to ask someone to sit around for a painting that's going to take hours. Can you imagine someone? So so uh, many teachers have talked about from life, but a lot paint from photographs. And um, so that's what I want to do. I want to paint from photographs. This first one, I was told life and photographs. And so I chose myself because I'm isolated, pandemic. I'm right here, which is how I made myself a little more pink. The cameras all do something weird to you, if you've noticed. Look, it's this camera versus this camera. You know, they're just a little bit different, you know, a brightness. That's what I was trying to say. And, uh, you know, it's just every camera is different, you know, and you just got to. Ah, so grain of salt, guys. And and I'd love to hear more, Catherine. I really would. Oh, my God. Very cool painting. You go. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. Um, Like I said, it looks like me, you know. Boy, I feel, you know what, you know, have you ever done something that you're not so sure you're going to continue? I am because look at the size of my paint. I will not let these sit around and not get used. <laughs> but my point is this. you Sometimes you do something that you may not be interested in pursuing later. I'm not saying this about painting because I, I, I think I've been bitten, actually. But, uh, and I'll share my journey. Trust me, I, I'll, I'll share little bits of my journey. But my point is, is I start to now better understand people who have painted uh, my portrait, okay? I've got a couple people who have been nice enough to do a portrait of me or for me. And uh, my friend Philo has this one back here that's hidden because my husband said this portrait here staring at you would be very scary. But one day during the AMA, if you want, I'll take it down and show you what it is. But it's me as Medea because I play a lot of villains. When I do get an acting part, a lot of times I can play a villain. Love playing villains, by the way. And uh, so he painted me as a villain. He painted me as Medea, who was the uh, woman who kills, you know, so many children. And it's, it's pretty creepy. It's nice and creepy. But one of the things that I pushed for was, you know, I wanted to be able to tell it was dreadlocks. So one of the things I like about my painting is that there is no doubt that, that, oh, look, that cute dog. 
along again. See, she's stealing the show. That's my girl. Um, but what I started to say was um, that with this particular painting that uh, uh, that really means a lot to me is that you can tell that they're dreadlocks and you can tell that they're my dreadlocks. So I'm really happy with that. I'm also, let me see, if I'm trying to make it bigger. It doesn't, there we go. You can also see that it's painty. It's painty, painty, painty. And I'm really happy that it looks painty, painty. Now I think I can do more painty, painty and make it even more mine. But right now the idea was to explore the mediums, see if I can work with it, work with what I like, what kind of um, uh, easel do I like? What kind of palette do I like? What kind of colors? And I'm just scratching the surface, but I really love it. Is that the way you feel, Catherine? It just, it just is, is it's right now it's an exploration. Now I have another teacher that I'm going to go with and he's going to talk to me about techniques. Again, it's on video, but he's going to talk to me about techniques of working in acrylics from the very first time you dip the brush into the properties of the paint and learn how to do certain things. And he calls them various different methods, blending. What was the other one he called it? Like blending is an oil painting term that he says a lot of acrylic artists don't necessarily do, but it has a different meaning than blending. You know, it, I don't know, but I'm getting ready to practice it. And I'll share with you as I, as I learn, I just signed up for that class. So kind of cool. Love this. Yeah. I I'm with you. I'm with you. It's, very, very interesting. And I think it's fun that you get to work with, uh, uh, you know, someone who, I mean, her work. Okay. Let me just be fair and show you her work. Okay. She paints in oils, first of all. Uh, and I honestly said, nah, I don't really want to paint in oils. Um, I want to paint in acrylics because like I got them for Christmas. So let's not buy oils. Plus uh, they can be toxic and I I'm 63. Didn't want the toxicity, but many teachers say oils and acrylics are similar. You just have to learn how to use the medium. This is true with Sculpey. This is true with, with water clay. This is true with oil clay. This is true with wax in the sculpting realm, which I know frontwards, backwards, every way, right? So this is true. You've got to learn. And when you start, you have to give yourself a break. You're not going to make it look like your teachers necessarily for so many different reasons. One, your own self wanting to do your own thing, right? This is why I like that she didn't ask us to all do the same thing. But here is her art, okay? Her art is photo real. You see how photo real she likes to do photo real paint. Mine doesn't look anything like hers. It has similarities, but to me, if I step back from this guys, I would think it was a photograph and my little heart said, no, my little heart said, what's the point of paint if it doesn't look like it's paint. So, and that is me. Okay. You got to understand this is not me judging her. Her work is stunning but not for Terry. Okay. And you may find that for you, it's not for you either. So I'm going to explore, I'm a beginner. So I'm going to explore every possible opportunity I can with acrylics. These are a bit of an expensive paint. So uh, I'm warned by artists who use palette knife painting. I can't wait to do palette knife painting. I'm, I'm fighting right now whether I should do palette knife or learn more acrylic, but I'm going to follow my steps, which is I'm going to learn some properties of these paints. And then maybe I'll just throw caution to the wind and work in a palette knife, you know, just to see what, what does that do? What does that do when I do a portrait in a palette knife? And there's a great guy on YouTube. I think his name is... Uh, Sergio or something like that. And he is like, he is so cute. I talked about him um, on Friday. 
He is about the painting, should not look like a photograph. I know I'm going to catch hell, but it should not look like a photograph. It should look like a painting. And your painting should be influenced by how you feel. If you feel a bit dark, maybe the painting becomes a little bit dark. And if you feel joyful, maybe your painting is a lot lighter. But your painting comes from you, comes from deep inside, and should be your painting not a photograph what is the point and that was his feeling i kind of agree at least for now who knows what will happen as i keep going where will my style go what will it happen and catherine what do you think about this are you looking for your style as well or right now just kind of playing and paint which is also fun you know it's exciting Oh, thank you, Bonnie. Thank you. It looks like me. You know, I feel like score, you know. <laughs> the first time I did the eye, I was like, oh, man, it looks like an eye. Do you know what I mean? I am really a three-dimensional gal. I love sculpting what I see. Putting something three-dimensional on a two-dimensional space is so foreign to me. It's like, yee! but you got, if you're going to be saying to people, jump when the jumping's good, or even when the jumping's not good, and try something new, and don't worry if you screw up. I got to follow my own, you know, I got to follow my own, my own advice. Or what, how authentic can a person be if they, if they go, you know, try something new. Oh, I will never do that unless it's perfect. Unless it's absolutely perfect. I can't do it. No, no, don't do that to yourself. You know, if it's not painting, you know, if painting just doesn't float at all with you, don't do it. You know, if, if that's not your, your, your shindig, your gig, maybe you always wanted to, to knit or build miniatures or shoot films. I mean, come on. Now is the time. I mean, wow. Just who cares if it's bad or good? It's just there. And a step in any direction, even if it's the wrong one, creates momentum. So whatever that which makes you afraid, go ahead and unlock that Pandora's box, that cabinet. Unlock that scary cabinet and look into that darkness and reach inside and do something fun. Because uh, uh, it's scary. I'm not going to lie. I was scared. I was scared to death to paint that eye because I was afraid, you know, who knows what it looked like. You're feeling painterly. Yes. It's, yeah, I don't know. You feel like maybe you should be wearing a beret and a white smock and going like this all the time. Or like this. <laughs> it's great. I'm looking now for specifics. I want to know about composition. How do you lay out a painting? What makes it dynamic in the layout? I know how I do with a sculpture, but is it similar? How is it different? You know? And what is it about acrylics that makes them so special besides the fact that they're quick drying and besides the fact that they're non-toxic and they use water not turpentines and oils and things so oil is beautiful i painted in oil for a little bit and really was challenged uh because i am so allergic to a lot of the things that are in oil so acrylics got me excited because i'm not doing anything you know is the way it is my friend Dennis says, you will believe a man can fly. I love that tagline on the original advertising for Superman. And I did. I still do. In fact, watching it over the weekend, the zinger that I got when he he's flying and he looks at the camera. I mean, pow! You know. <laughs> so I'm with you, Dennis. I mean, if you revisit some of these movies that are extra special to you, or you get in a discussion. And this is one of the things in the AMA, guys. The AMA is on Friday. If you want to ask about films or share with me a film that's really special to you, maybe it's a film that uplifted you. Maybe it's a film that you always go to when you feel a certain way. Um, maybe it's like, like during the pandemic, I'm not going to lie to you, it had to be a kick butt film. I couldn't really go to two of the fluffy films like on Hallmark Channel. They just felt so in authentic to me to me please understand i'm not saying they were inauthentic i'm saying for some reason during the pandemic they didn't resonate and be authentic with me i had to have kick butt films 
So I was a lot of watching a lot of Clint Eastwood, a lot of Jackie Chan. I love Rambo, First Blood. So First Blood, not Rambo, but First Blood. Rambo is kind of cool too. Any shark movie like Jaws, love that. Um, you know, it had to be one of these. Any Liam Neeson, seriously, love Liam Neeson. There's one called Snow something, Snow Border, Snow. Anyway, it's great. It's so good. Uh, or Taken. Um, you know, I just had to have one where, where you kick something to the curb, a kick butt movie. Maybe it was just because I wanted to see people just get rid of something that was nasty, like this, like this, this virus. So when, you know, and animated films, okay. Uh, Kung Fu Panda, How to Train Your Dragon. I love those. And those are kind of kick butt films too, especially Kung Fu Panda, which is a rising above the ashes because he too is bullied because of who he is. And uh, then become, and you know, one of the best ways to put the bullies in their place is to be successful. And what does the Kung Fu Panda do? He becomes successful. So animated school too. Uh, I will say Christmas time when Soul came out and how beautiful the message was in that and how wonderful that movie was and, and, and everything. It wasn't really a kick butt movie, but it was a movie that just seemed to fill in little areas. I just loved it. Uh, so yeah. Uh, movies like the flight attendant, which was so weird guys. If you get a chance to see the series, it is, it is a pay per series. I hope that they unlock it so you all can see it somewhere. It's just such a brilliant series. So weird, so bizarre, so off the wall. And you know how much I love off the wall. So it was really great. And then Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso, which is just a feel-good kind of a thing. You get people going at you and being angry at you because you're you. Like you could change it if you wanted to. And you don't. That's what makes you special. But even if you are as vibrant as Ted Lasso, Sometimes it will disconnect with people. The harder you try, the worse it gets. And it's such a wonderful, wonderful show that kind of helps you just figure out, you know, just feel good about who you are and sends a message that it's really not your fault. If you have the best intentions and it still doesn't work, you still have the best intentions, you know? So, yeah. So, Dennis, I agree with you. I believed a man could fly. Good morning, Michael Luzzi. How are you? I miss you a lot, buddy. We need to make that connection for sure. Uh, April 17th is the deadline for the contest, for the cachet uh, contest, and I'm not sure... Um, Honestly, Michael, I don't know if I'm going to even enter. And so uh could use your help on that. We need to have a chat. I know your enthusiasm will help me to figure out what I want to enter. Because right now I'm kind of like, <laughs> not good. Yeah. Love you, dearest. You would have so been my, been my friend. I am, right? We would be besties in school. Well, we're, we're besties now, right? especially in paint. I'm great to hear that you're painting too. It's kind of nice to, to know someone. However, I've made some really good friends in my class uh, that I'm taking with Daria, the one that does the photo reel. There is a lady there. Uh, I believe her name is Tammy. And Tammy is an abstract artist. And she decided to try her hand at an art that you recognize. I mean, because abstract, you don't necessarily always recognize it, right? So she wanted to do a portrait and she's not happy. Uh, I think she's a little bit happier now. But one of the things I kept telling her is I love her portrait. I love it. I love it. It looks like her. But think of an abstract artist whose first time is doing a, a, a portrait and where those challenges might be. And I love it because she nailed the things I think you nail as a beginner. Okay. She has a lot of energy in her portrait. I just love the energy. The smile is there. The energy is there. The joy is there. It's not dead accurate. It's a little, but she's an abstract artist. So that little could be 
her window into if she did another portrait and another and she sort of embraced the abstract brain with the portrait idea her development could be like picasso have you seen picasso's early works of figures and then later look where picasso goes you know you kind of like hmm. i think the reason i like the palette knife and stuff like that is van gogh because i just love the way he takes little palettes of color <coughs> pardon me and creates like his self-portrait now it's true many artists are twisted so we have to understand that many artists go through personal have their own personal demons but don't we all at some point but my gosh you cannot argue with his ability you know if you look at his work his sunflowers which to me, if I were to put them up with other, maybe kid drawings, it looks kind of like a kid drawing and yet it's famous. So now I have to say to myself, why? You know, it's his. So just the freedom in embracing what your style is, is great. And that's what I love about hers is her style. There's another guy, I think his number is Sergey or something, who whose painting is his portrait and looks like an old master. I just got to tell you, it's not Rembrandt old master. It's more like, um, who am I thinking of? Uh, maybe Picasso too. Just not round, flat, but still looks like him. But I would know his painting from Mars, okay? And I just admire people who when I see that, it's bam, I know it's yours, okay? So understand that a lot of times students are like popularity. If you're, you're exactly like your teacher, that's great. But you look, you begin to look at others and see their, their, their strengths coming out and saying, don't erase that strength because that could be the thing that makes it yours. Okay. You might want to follow that thread like a little bit more and see where it leads you, you know, and so that's what I want. I want to follow a thread and find that you'll, you'll get it when you're painting, won't you, Catherine, where you'll do it one way and you'll all of a sudden go, ah, that's it. That's, that's what I, that, 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 that there. <laughs> it hasn't hit me yet. I'm just, I'll tell you what the zinger is with this painting. And that is, yo, it looks like me. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Richard, you're so sweet. Uh, Terry Hart, Jackson rules the world. Yes. <laughs> um, Want to create my own experiences for all y'all. I'm so love these. I love these comments, guys. I love them. Did I tell you how much I love them? Oh, you're doing me such a favor. Rose is here. Bob and I did the Chalk Walk Pocket in 1999 with our son and daughter. They were in a stroller. Okay, listen to what they're saying. What I said about the chalk walk with a stroller, with a scooter. I mean, the powered scooter. You can do it with the powered scooter. Seriously, you can. Wheelchair. Seriously. We had lots of fun. They gave us tickets to go to Disneyland when you finish the walk. Wonderful organization. Yes, now they give you the opportunity uh, before the pandemic. Let me say that again. Rewind. Uh now, what they did before the pandemic was give you the opportunity to buy some tickets for Disneyland at a really highly reduced price. But the window to use them has gone to about this big. Whoa. A little challenging. So what I did is got in line with some of my friends and then we found families that were buying tickets and said, would you, can you want a couple of tickets? And then we pretended they were our family and we said, Let's buy. I can use my bracelet to buy my family tickets. It was what I used to do as an, as an Imagineer when I was under the umbrella of Imagineering. Now I am the come here, come here, get away, go away Imagineer. But when I was under the roof of Imagineering in, on Flower Street, I got what's called a silver pass, which allowed me to bring three people in anytime during the year into Disneyland. So I would always sneak to the front when I had to go there to study a, an attraction or something. And take people in with me. You know, I'd look for a family of five or a family of three and say, 
you know, take three of them and go through the turnstile and say, this is my family. Got a little strange sometimes. <laughs> They're your family. Yes, they are. You have something to say about it? You know, <laughs> help people save a little money that really, really wanted to go. Um, but uh, I love that when I had my silver pass. Had to relinquish it when I when I left the uh, roof of the company. But uh, now I, I, you know, I'm an independent contractor because of what what I've said before. It's good. It's good for both of us. So I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. And you're right. It's a wonderful organization. And virtually, y'all can do it. So I hope you'll join and consider joining the OUAC Walkers. Good morning, says Ava. Looking forward to Disneyland opening again. Excited for announced potential expansion. It looks like that potential expansion is not just potential, but it's going to happen. Uh, Friday, we talked about Disney saying to Anaheim, look, we're going to take on more and put less on you guys in in Anaheim. We're going we're, we're gonna to stop asking for so much city uh, uh, funding help because Disneyland was entitled to that. They're a business and each city funds their, helps their businesses to stay where they are and to do better in there. But Disney's saying we're going to take some of that back. And why? Because they want to have more creative control. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. And you're right, Ava. I'm excited about that too. What would you put there, guys? What would you do? What goes there? In fact, I was asked this on Friday. What would I do if they were going to do a third a third gate? So you got California Adventure, you got Disneyland. What's the third one? You know? I know what I would do, and I said it on Friday. But what would you do? What, what do you see? You add to the current one, break it apart, and have several places to go. So you have this little Disney commute. <laughs> Could be extremely cute. Janet Joyce is in the house. Hi, honey. We were at Downtown Disney on Friday. It wasn't too crowded, and we went to the world of Disney. Exactly. Why? Friday. I'm telling you, during the week, people behave. On weekends, you got to be careful. No matter where it is, be careful. Now, uh, that being said, Let's just segue just a little bit into movie theaters. Have you guys gone to a movie theater? Have you been to one? Have you heard what they decided to do, which I think is brilliant? You can rent a movie theater out all yourself, a whole theater. You can rent it for just the two of you or 20 people or more if you're all, I don't think it can be more. I think it has to be between two and 20. And let's say you want a first run movie like Raya. I think it costs about $320 to rent that theater all yourself. And then you got to divide that, of course, between how many people. So if there's 10 people, $320 is what? 32 bucks a person. See, see, see? You all pay 32 bucks and you go. 20 people, going to be a little bit less, right? You can order your... Con sessions contactless so a friend of mine did it she did it with family members she did it with her grandchildren her uh her daughter daughter-in-law son-in-law right and the kids jumped around the entire time in this theater going we can sit here we can sit here we can sit here we can sit here so first run movie is going to run you about 320 350 bucks depending on where you rent it and then some theaters like the amc which is one of my favorite theaters uh, they are showing past movies that maybe you'd like to see on the big screen. So for example, Caddyshack is one, if you can believe that one of my favorites, but I'm kind of hoping they get in league with Disney and maybe show 20,000 leagues under the sea. Then I'm there. Okay. I'm there. But if you do an older movie and you can go on amc.com and look at what those older movies are, the entire theater, you rent it and play that movie is like, hundred bucks. Yeah. No, no lie. About a hundred bucks, $99 or something. Wouldn't that be fun guys? Don't you like, wouldn't you love to do that? I would so love to do this. I would so love to do this. In fact, I said to my husband, if it was a Marvel film, it'd just be the two of us, you know, invest in it, you know, sure. It'd be 150 bucks a person or whatever it is, but you know, 
might be a fun thing to do, you know, have a whole theater to yourself. Of course, we had that during Captain Marvel because we went to see Captain Marvel when everybody was seeing Endgame. It was just us. <laughs> so sometimes it can be your timing. <laughs> but now, if you're someone who has high-risk people or you're just concerned about being around others who don't quite understand what social distancing mean, how about renting a theater? You feel kind of, you know, very cool. And be sure to pick up your trash because they'll know it's you. <laughs> so don't be leaving it. If you're one of those people that leave it, pick it up. They'll go, ah, ah. <laughs> We're not your mom. Uh, but anyway, it's a really cool idea. I can think of several of you I wouldn't mind doing that with. Uh, getting together and, you know, putting the money together and going to see you know, we could go see, you know, once things, you know, I don't know. What I'm feeling is you could, you could rent it for 10 people, you know, and if the movie is 300 and something, it's 32 bucks a person. Many of you have said with your kids and concessions and everything, it's a hundred bucks. When you go to the movie, it's crazy. So if you start doing the math and breaking it down, everybody pays for a ticket to be a part of it. Oh, I'd love to do this. I would absolutely adore doing it this way. Yeah. So think about it. It's a fun, it's a fun, cool idea. And just like Janet said, you go during the week, it's going to be a lot less crazy people in the commune, common areas. Rose says she has a Portos in West Covina. And now during COVID, you go park and wait in your car for your order. That is part of it. Okay. It, the one here in my town, you can walk up to a window that's protected and pick up your order, or you can stay in your car and they'll bring your order, or you can pull up to a person at a kiosk and they'll get your order. So there's three ways you can do it. And uh, it's amazing. So this uh, weekend, I wanted to be a part of the uh, Asia Asians campaign of no hate you know, of, of protecting Asian people and, uh, uh, stop hating, you know, that, that campaign hashtag no hate Asia or no hate, whatever it was, I had it right. But of course now I've been talking so much about movies, my head's on, but I went and bought sushi from my favorite place. I love, I love, I'm, I'm close to this family. I love this restaurant. I love, I love everything about uh, the food, and I, I would have ordered ch Chinese because Chinese delivers. I had to go actually pick up uh, uh, the sushi, but I, I was fine. I was willing to do it. I made a big order. I wanted to just support them and tell them I love them and that, you know, this was baloney. Bullies of every kind need to stop. Just stop. You know, these nobody can change who they are, and you have no right to ask them to do so. So please cut it out. And I'm talking to the wrong people here, but but I just wanted to be a part of that campaign because I'm not a, a walking protester. But when you give me a hashtag or whatever and you say, hey, could you go do this? I'm more than happy to do it. A lot of times I, I like I haven't posted, but I just, it's cool. I know wax, been a dental tech for 50 years. Hey, what kind of wax do you use? Uh, Michelangelo was my first superhero. Yes. my. <laughs> Do you mean the artist or the turtle? The Ninja Turtle. Because some of you mean the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> Catherine, which one? I've been a, um, a uh, Michelangelo, Michelangelo fan. I don't think he cares how you pronounce his name. For a long time. Ever since I was... Yeah. His sculpture... Uh, I, the Pieta was the big one. And I really, really wanted to go see the Pieta when I, 16, I backpacked through Europe that, no, 19, I backpacked through Europe. It was my one bucket list thing I wanted to do as a young girl. Once I graduated high school, I said, before I get into the workforce or I go to college or whatever, I want to go to Europe. And I backpacked through Europe. I <clears throat> was going to go for a month with some friends and I actually uh, sketched on the streets of Paris. And I mimed, you know this, for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, in Piccadilly Square in uh, London. 
uh, to earn money so that I could stay two more months because I did not want to leave. I loved it there so much. And uh, uh, amazing experience. It's, it was life changing for me. It was one of my most fun things. Uh, I went with two of my friends and uh, they went home and I stayed, um, which was bold now. I, you know, now I go, what was I thinking? <laughs> what am I crazy? Uh, but uh, some of the best books and everything. And of course, Rome had to be on the itinerary. I had to go to Rome. I spent probably a good hour and a half, maybe two, I lose track of time, in the Sistine Chapel. I wanted to see that so bad. And also wanted to see the Vatican City because my favorite piece that Michelangelo has pretty much ever done is the Pieta. I strive really hard for my sculpture to have as much power as Michelangelo's Pieta which it, for those of you who may not know Michelangelo very well, it's the one where Mary is holding the body of the dead Jesus. And if you really look at this sculpture, you'll see what a master he truly was and is. Uh, it's all internal. So it's not like, or, you know, it's not those huge theatrical facial expressions. Michelangelo never really did much of that. And that's why I love him so much. It's all internal. And she is holding him. She is looking at him. And you know, you can feel what she feels. It's so, so powerful. And seeing it in person is even better. However, there's always one idiot and sometimes two who decided that they would carve in the foot of Jesus their initials. I don't know how your brain can even think to do something like that. So confusing to me. My brain will never wrap around how you are so comfortable destroying some, you know, putting, but as a result, you ruined it for our, all of us because they put glass between us and the Pieta. So I could never get close to her and really experience it. But while I was in the chapel, the Sistine Chapel and in the Vatican City, I was touching some, I would close my eyes and touch some of the other sculptures, because for me, it's tactile. My eyes see one thing, but my hands see more. And together, they're even more powerful for me as an artist. So the uh, there was a um, priest there who came and told me I could not touch them like that. They, they said, you shouldn't, you can't do that. And just like I'm explaining to you, I explained to him that I had saved all my pennies up as a 19 year old girl, as a sculpture, and that I had worshiped and loved Michelangelo. And he was one of the reasons I am a sculptor today. And one of the ways I can truly understand the master is to feel them. And the next thing he did for me was beyond belief. And that's why I say, ask or tell, share your heart. And uh, he took me in a back room where they were getting ready to ship some major pieces of Michelangelo. You may have seen them where he has carved the figure a little bit, but they're still strapped. They're still trapped in the marble of which he carved them. So the figure is being pulled out. You still see the block of marble and then the figure. And I was allowed to touch those. I was allowed to stay in that room and touch those for as long as I wanted. And I have to tell you, it was a very emotional experience because, wow, allowing me to do that. So generous. You can see, I still feel it. Yeah. There are things in life that you just, you got to ask. They could say no. You know, I talk about books that I love in the Tower of London. To this day, I still use them if I'm sketching. And they are tired because Italy doesn't buy, at the time I was there in 1977, they didn't bound their books very well. But I absolutely adore them and they're, they're I should really get them rebound because I don't want to lose any pages. They're that special to me. But they are magical books. They are magical, magical books. And every time I went to the Tower of London, the place where the books I wanted were, it wasn't available. 
it was close. So finally I went downstairs and I said, look, I'm from America. I need the armor of the Tower of London. I need swords of the Tower of London. I need these books. I must have these books. How do I get these books when the place that has them is closed? And you know what they did? They took me into the warehouse. True story. Took me in the warehouse and said, why don't you pick what you want and we'll sell it to you. <laughs> and I bought a stack and my friends were like, what the? So you just ask, you just ask. Cause one person's crown jewels, which was my mother. Go see the crown jewels, go see the crown jewels, which were beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but they're not swords. <laughs> and I've loved swords since I was this big. I love a good sized two-handed sword. So Game of Thrones, you got it. Never missed an episode. Love Game of Thrones. Even the bad season, I love. And I wasn't a fan of the ending though. I didn't like the ending, but I still watch it because I love Game of Thrones. And um, sword, so, sword and sword play movies like uh, uh, Excalibur. <laughs> <laughs> a dream to some, a nightmare to others. That was so said by Merlin. Um, so yeah, just I'm such an armor fan. And then Bob Ringwood and Excalibur made designed the armor for that. Bob Ringwood, an amazing uh, uh, costumer, costume designer, and then Full Circle, which happens to me a lot. I'm working on Dune, and guess who the designer of the costumes are? Bob Ringwood. So guess, guess who I get to sit and have a coffee with and talk costumes? Bob Ringwood. So you just never know. You never know. This allows me to segue into I've got to meet Clint Eastwood. So if any of you have that power, I won't take too much of his time. I'll even donate to his favorite charity, Please let me have 15, 20 minutes of your time, Clint. I really want to talk to you and share my heart. That's it. Okay. Uh, waxed at least 500,000. You know, you, you, you have a, a, a great uh, point here, Catherine. I'm working with a dentist who wanted to learn how to sculpt, and you guys know how to sculpt. I mean, you really do. You're sculpting. <laughs> But it's got to look good, doesn't it? So you guys know how to sculpt. I'm not sure. Uh, he spoke with me a little bit about the waxes he uses. I use a toy wax. I learned how to do it in Mattel at Mattel. I love it. I to this day I still use it. It's by a different manufacturer, but but still the wax from Mattel. And I absolutely love it. I love the teeny tiny. Let me see if I can show you. Um, I'm going to show you. I got to find the magical section. So just a moment, please. Here you go. Teeny tiny details. This is the pirate bed plaque for Guillermo del Toro, the director. And my scariest part about this was, uh, this is done in wax and then cast. Uh, but, uh, the scariest part about this was spelling his name wrong. You know, I just didn't want to hear Guillermo del Toro say, Teddy, it's beautiful, but, uh, you spell my name wrong. Ah! I, I, that was, that. okay. But look at the detail in this guys. I'm very proud of this. This is obviously for you who are your Disney files. Know that this came from the plaque that's at the Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland. So it fits. That's why I segued into it. Um, here it is in the wax. You see the wax is pink. I absolutely love it. It's opaque. It's non-translucent. So I can really see the detail. Here is the other side of it. Probably should change those around so you can see left and right, but I'll do that later. Okay. Are you ready to see how big this is? That's how big it is. So Terry, look at me. And then here's how big it is. Basically small. So if you look at this and you look above my finger and you see the uh, 
the tell is the the uh, uh, mirror. So there she is. There's the mirror. See her arm and the mirror. Now let's go back. Here's arm and mirror right here. Tiny. What? A little wider than my finger? Yeah. Wax is brilliant. You can get super tiny. So I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So basically, Catherine, uh, you have the ability, and uh, I'm sure some of the things you could create from wax would be phenomenal, just phenomenal. If you want to talk to me more about it, I'm more than happy to share more. Just give me a shout. Uh, or we can share it with everybody on the Ask Me Anything coming up this Friday. So uh, theme park, still can't wait for a theme park gals, Terry Harden meeting at Disneyland. Yes, we will have that. Believe me, we will have that. Um, yes, we will. We will. Vaccine coming up for me. Um, April 1st, they're going to say, okay, doors open. Come get it. Ah! <laughs> and I will. Angie. You know what's confusing to me? They say cough in your elbow, but then they say do the elbow bumps. <laughs> they just left all their germs on the elbow. I don't get it. You know, that's <laughs> that's a good point. I never even thought about that, Angie, but that's a little chilling now that you said that. Now I really don't want to do elbow bumps. <laughs> and this is what I love about all you guys. See, very observant. Very, very, very observant. That's so flippant observant. I can't even believe it. And uh, I missed that. Thank you, Bonnie. I mean, Angie. I think it was about $200 for one day. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holly Mac. I really want to spend my 40th birthday at Disney. I share your anniversary date, January 4th. Oh, is your birthday January? January 4th is such a great day. Holly, I think you can do it, girl. Let me know if you're going to be doing it uh, here at Disneyland, because I know that's what you're saying. Because by then, I hope Club 33 will be open and maybe we can put a little icing on your cake. We'll do our best, right? We're going to think positive like crazy. Hello, Linda. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. I really love uh, you guys commenting, and I'm so grateful. I really, this, this just makes me feel like we're sort of having a conversation. Even though I have to read, it's still, I like it. Uh, Grim Greening Tracy says, when I go to an art museum, I want to get super close. I want to look at every stroke Monet created. Exactly. And they rope it now because you can't, you know, in the beginning, they used to, as a student, allow you to just touch certain ones, but excessive touching, et cetera, et cetera, doesn't really make it work. And one of the things I love is there's one, oh, I wish I could remember the name of it, but there's many. If you go to the Getty, there's many where you stand way back and it just looks so real, but still something about it says painting. And then when you get up close, it's really a painting. Like the only reason that my painting, if you look at my painting, uh, my first one, it's so nice to be able to say my painting. Oh my goodness. My painting. Anyway, <laughs> my painting is 12 by 12 inches. It's the canvas I had and I'm watching people do big. And that excites me. I have an idea of the painting I want to do with a palette knife, but I want to do it big. The only problem is, and I'm probably going to have to talk to Jenny about storage, is storing it. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, I do this giant painting and I go, now where am I going to put this thing? Now that I've painted it, I don't want to put it in the garage. You know, so that kind of, you know, but I don't want to paint tiny. For the first time, I love sculpting miniatures. I love it. I love it. I mean, I am obsessed with sculpting small. Really, really love to sculpt small. I will show you. Uh, that really should have been in that album. I'm not quite sure why it's not, but I won't complain. What I will do is find that sucker and show you what I mean if I can find it. I'm looking carefully. Uh, 
I'm hoping. Yes, here it is. Okay. So I love tiny, a sculpting tiny, you know, you know, guys, you've seen, you've seen my ghosts. Uh, you saw my stitch. He's about that big. I like small. Okay. So like Grim Grinning Tracy says, you like to get close. I'd like to do small, but now I want to do big painting. I seem to feel like I want to, I want to spread my wings a little bit. 12 by 12 uh, was a lot of fun. And 12 by 12 was only because I had the canvas available and I was really expecting not a lot. I mean, I don't know acrylics well. The closest I got was with Janny. I had a great time doing the, the thing with Janny. Very free, very liberating. Does not look like Janny's, which really was a score. But I uh, wanted to just want to see what's out there. And like I had been saying with Catherine, you know, is it big that I want to paint? Is it small that I want to paint? Just like sculpting, I've really fallen in love with small. So I'll show you exactly uh, what I mean here. Okay, here is a... Uh, uh, the hand from uh, Guillermo del Toro's Pirates of the Caribbean that is a dime and look at those fingers. This is wax, okay? This is the glory of wax and why I love wax and how tiny I can actually get. Now, if this blows you away, how about that? That's the size of a quarter. And uh, yeah, if you look at the quarter and you look at those teeny tiny teeth, man, this stuff drives me. I love this. I love this. This is what floats my boat. This is what gets me excited is to do this kind of stuff. Okay. Yeah. I'm so ja I'm so stoked. Uh Oh, my husband wrote me a message. Can I just check? He, he I just want to make sure there's nothing, you know, like the house. You don't have a house. For Bella and her grandmother. Oh, guys. Oh, I got to show. Uh, Bella's probably. Uh, I'll make sure I get this to her. Okay. All right. Bella is my, is in Patreon. She's with the tribe. And my husband made her something. So that's super, super cool. Um, broadcasting now. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry. I got people trying to talk to you. Know, you get the phone call when you're in the bathroom and also when I'm broadcasting. <laughs> okay. But anyway, yeah. So here is that super small skull again. So again, this is what I like. I like sculpting tiny and I think I'll be sculpting small. I do big too. Believe me, I've done 40 feet tall. Um, I've done huge sculptures, sculptures for uh, Disney and and Donald Trump. Yeah, I did his Thomas Mahal sign with about three other people for Atlantic City years ago. See, I told you, I get around, right? Big, like using a cherry picker. You know, one of those machines that, that go, gzzk, 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 and you're like, gzzk, carve, 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 gzzk. Felt a little Mount Rushmore for me, actually. And I really enjoyed it. I can't imagine sculpting stone as big as Mount Rushmore. Um, if I had a, ever had the opportunity, maybe I would. But I do foam that big. I did it for the film industry for quite a long time. So, but small is what I really like sculpting. Paint-wise, I'm not sure. Now, once I find my zone, my painting zone, Catherine can probably weigh in on this. Others who paint could weigh in on this. When I find my sculpting zone, we'll start to see paintings in there. Yeah, we will. And it's going to be extremely, extremely cool when it happens. So right now I am in the beginner stage. So I'm using canvases I already own. And many teachers are like, you should be getting this type of canvas. Maybe you shouldn't be getting a pre-stretch canvas. Maybe you should dry canvas boards. Yeah. But right now I'm in the experimental stage when I finally get to the point to where I really think my myself, me is coming through, then I will probably consider all of the above that teachers are telling me to do. There's one who says it's great if you just get cloth, canvas cloth, and then give a two, two, 
inch border around it and then you can have it stretched later i'll probably talk to janny about this and see janny has been experimenting with board and metal and elements being introduced because she loves to introduce objects in she's all about recycling which i love about her i think that's super cool and when i paint with her i like to try her method like bringing stuff in doesn't mean that i won't bring stuff in but uh, it's great that she's doing recycling. So so as far as the canvases are concerned, I don't know. I'm still, you know, uh, ba -ba 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 okay, he's saying okie dokie. Okay, great. I have a cousin who loves these uh, little, what are they, avatars? Oh, gosh, he loves them. He keeps sending me an avatar every day. I find it entertaining, <laughs> but uh, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so uh, so that's kind of the cool thing about it. I'm I'm exploring, and I want to play with the different things in the different areas. And then, like Janie, I will probably do some things smaller, see what it's like to do a small painting and and everything. And then I went once I get if I continue when let me say when I continue painting if I feel strong enough that there's something I want to reproduce. Then I'll start to talk to people about reproducing um, the pieces for prints or who knows what. Je clay. Hey. <laughs> There's so many areas the two-dimensional can fit that uh, I'm excited to ex exper experiment more. But understand, sculpture is still in the works, guys. It's in my blood. So... So I will always be sculpting. Yeah, in fact, I'm working on a couple pieces right now. And I can't wait to dive into those as well. Um, right now, it's moving a little slow because I'm all, all about the hitchhiking ghosts. And uh, with, with my manufacturer, COVID is still around. And I can tell from my manufacturer because he should have delivered me my five sets that go out in March but he has not yet done so apparently today or tomorrow, which is tight. So what I did was prep my um, wonderful uh, custom boxes for the ghosts uh, so that they're ready to go for uh, the five that will come. So all I have to do is run my test sequence, make sure they turn on, make sure that they look good, make sure they're anchored properly because you paid a lot of money for them and they should have a quick turnaround. Okay. So you will get them early April, but you will get them providing he gets them to me first. I'm still waiting on my five. And then I have to have a talk with him because April, you know, he's going to have to go back to the drawing board and make sure that his team can do the five for April. Cause they only do five sets at a time. Five, 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 five. That's why I limited it to 50. For one thing, they charged me more money and I passed it on to you if you, you've you bought these ghosts. And uh, uh, where are you, my loves? Here we go. I'm going to show you to the, show them to you one more time. Here they are. These are my illuminating ghosts. I have about 10 sets left. Those 10 sets will be delivered to you in October. They may be able to get to you earlier. It really depends on the people who have already pre-ordered. Um, and uh, if you want them, uh, write to me and I'll give you more explanation. And we also have the, um, we all, I mean, they look so good on the shelf. Let me show you. See, they separate out. They look like little specters that have appeared on your shelf. They really are one of my greatest accomplishments ever as a sculptor. Uh, and I'm very proud of them. Will I do them again? Heck no. <laughs> so if you want to invest, there's 10 sets left before they're sold out. And uh, they really are quite beautiful. But I will also show you that I also created these, which are the Blacklight Ghosts. They're going to start delivery uh, next month. And you pretty much can get them in a couple months because it takes a little less work to get these. These don't light up. They're black light ghosts that, that if I show you again, it's externally the way they're painted. So when you put a black light on them, you can see how they look. And uh, they're a lot, uh, they're less investment to adopt 
than the illuminating ones. And here you can see the illuminating ones on different shelves just to show you the benefit of separation. They actually have a light switch and they, they turn on, but you can see the lights are designed and the ghosts are designed, my designs, to uh, illuminate, not just be like a nightlight. So uh, the reason I point those out is simply because I have to make sure they get to you in time. You, you have to pre-order them. You have to pay for them at a time. And uh, because of that, bless your hearts, you uh, have been so supportive of just when you get them to me, get them to me. I want them to be good. So, um, so yeah, so that's the goal. Um, March seems to be a little bit slow with my manufacturer, COVID, welcome. And uh, I, we just have to do it with a grain of salt. And I'm grateful that many of you do. So if you're interested in the, those ghosts, either set, just let me know. And I'll make sure that uh, they, the, you know, I'll, I'll give you the lowdown on them is what I'm going to say. The uh, black light ghosts, like I'm showing you here, are um, uh, limited to 100 so they are more, uh, they're less of an investment than the illuminating ones, which are limited to 50. And uh, I've only sold a fraction of these sets because I haven't really marketed them a lot, but uh, I've only sold a small fraction of them. So uh, there's going to be a lot, there's a lot available. You might even have your number, unless your number is 6913, uh, one, five, Lord knows. All I can tell you is that, uh, key numbers could be gone, but, uh, you can always call and ask if you want a particular number, but they do go between one and 100. Okay. So, um, that makes them more affordable as well. So that's kind of the, uh, the idea. And then of course there is the hitchhiking ghost pin, which I showed on Friday and that pin glows in the dark. And is beautiful and costs 20 bucks. So the same design, like my, uh, the same design, uh, it's my illustration, it's my design, it's my concept art, okay? And uh, again, it's Terry being Terry, wanting very much to uh, it to look like uh, it comes from me. So here's the pin, and you can see it's big. If I put it in my hand like that, look how big it is. $20, lined in silver. If you get it from me, it's embossed on the back like this, and then I sign it. So if I bring it in, you can see the embossing right here, but then there's my signature underneath. And I really like that they did this nice touch, this light blue. But it really is beautiful. It glows in the dark. It's 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 just it's killer good. It's just killer adorable. So basically, your go. I hope it covers... All your ghostly needs, those of you who love the hitchhiking ghosts, etc. So uh, there you go. All right. I know I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent, but uh, the reason I did is simply because, um, you know, just, yeah, just uh, great. Uh, so here we go. Let's see what we got here. Just like she said, Monet created the phase painting. The, the phrase painting a face on for applying makeup, I wonder, I wondered, and I drew literally painted a face using only varieties of makeup as a medium. Tracy, this is an art form. I don't know if you knew this, but if you Google doing just what you did, you'll find tons of other artists who do it that way. Yeah, yeah. I actually came across them not too long ago. So good for you. How did it feel like? What'd you think? Mark Silverman. Liam Neeson's second movie was Crawl. I know, right? But do you think he'd admit to that, Mark? <laughs> ay, 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 that movie. I barely remember it except for the weapon. <laughs> yes, exactly, the eyes. Yeah, well, I'm all about eyes and sketching, and they all say, though, eyes are windows to the soul, so you really want to nail that. But what's interesting in acrylic painting is different artists do it different ways. When I sketch, I do it just like I did with this painting, which is this eye, this eye, then come down into the nose and the mouth and then work the rest of the head. But uh, other artists do the whole face and then they kind of work 
the 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 shapes in and then they do the eyes at a later it's cool to watch i'm so excited about this exploration catherine i'm so far from done and i'll be happy to share it with you if you guys are interested right um if you're not i'll just quietly do it in my own little corner in my own little chair uh el Campitan is renting their theater for 99 people what's the cost bob and what are they showing bob uh, that's, that's the thing. The thing is though, 99 people, you a better right now with the pandemic, you better all know each other. Yeah. Or, or you see, they won't do it with different, with different groups. Usually the theaters can't, it's against health regulations, but they're onto something, aren't they? I think so. I think so. Yes, the PA to perfection. Sorry, I'm a hover speller. That's okay. I know what you mean. Spelling is not my thing either. But yeah, um, just beautiful. But the glass that separates her from us is a real, a real sad crime because someone, you know, wrote their initials in her foot, in his foot, in Jesus's foot. You know. <laughs> uh, don't let me go there. Stop me. Somebody stop me. Uh, crawl, 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 Mark, you love that stuff. And we know what movie, see, Mark Silverman has a movie that he loves too, War of the Gargantulas. If you haven't seen this, he's all about War of the Gargantulas. The stuff that Mark Silverman knows about War of the, Gar <laughs> of the Gargantulas would possibly curl your hair. He is a, he is an authority on it. This is one of my Disney treasure. One of, that is one of my Disney treasures is the sword from Sleeping Beauty. It's approximately three and a half to four feet long and the blade has the movie logo. Ooh, it sounds yummy, Bob. Very yummy. Very, 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 very yummy. Yes, I was trying to think if I have my, my sword book in here. I do, it's right behind me. Hold on a second. Oh. Okay, so these two books right here are the books I ran all over the Tower of London to get. And you can see they're a little worn because they have been looked through a gazillion times. I was 19 when I got these beautiful books. And uh, what I want to show you in here is uh one of my favorite armors i've got to find him though gotta i usually put a bookmark but i didn't want to let me see if i can find him in here my boy i really shouldn't say my boy but and i actually learned how to do a lot of dagger illustration because of this so let me see if i can find him uh let me see if it's under six foot. Hmm. They may not have it here under that. It would have been great if they did it like that. But in here, there's a knight that used a two-handed sword. You know what a two-handed sword is? It takes two hands to hold it and lift it. Yeah, two-handed, uh, and the average knight was 5'8", five, 5'9", five, so my height, right? Okay, so that was the average knight's height, okay? But when I was in the Tower of London, I fell in love with a particular knight who stood 6 feet 10 inches tall. 6'10". So imagine you are a knight in your armor on horseback fighting a knight who is standing on the ground and you're still looking up. Yeah, pretty scary, pretty scary. Henry VIII's armor in here. Anyway, I'll just kind of show you some of the things that I'm sharing. Don't know if I can find that guy, but he's in here. So here you can see, let me turn the light on. There you go. This book has got all this detail. This is why I fell in love with it. Okay, as we turn the pages, Oh, this is him. I think this, yeah, here he is. Here's our big boy, six feet, nine inches tall. So he is standing next to you while you're on horseback fighting him. Yeah. 
And then look at this detail here, guys, at the etching. So I used to etch in, um, I used to etch in daggers I used to sell at gun shows. Told you I'm not much for a gun person, but I etched in daggers. If I can find one of my daggers that I etched, I still may have it here. I'll show it to you. But this is the book that inspired me. And there's my giant knight right there. And then I was a crazy person over uh, swords. So I loved the two-handed swords, which are about five feet tall. And uh, they're just amazing. They're just amazing. Here's, here's one here. So you can see by its length, put it up here. You see? Look at the difference in length. Look at this, okay, which is 12 inches. And then you've got this that's another five, got, like almost five, six feet tall. This one too. Aren't they gorgeous? My favorite swords in the world. My favorite ones are the ones that are almost as big as me, you know, and that's all in this wonderful book from the Tower of London when I was 19. So these were two of the books that I fell in love with. These are nice because they're hardbound and they have really been through the test of time. Look at, look at how, <laughs> you're so good. They're my babies. I just, I just love them. I'm so proud of them. I just love them a lot. I love them an awful lot. All right. Come on, animal origami. Love it. <laughs> Those books are by far uh, some of my absolute favorites. I love them, love them, love them. I will show you the one I got outside in Italy, the ones I told you that break down. I'm not sure. Wait. Hmm. Those are going to take a little bit more hunting down because they they travel around a lot. They mean a lot to me. Um, books just just when I came back from my uh, my backpacking trip when I was nineteen, my pack weighed forty nine point nine pounds and I was allowed fifty. And it was books. It was definitely books. So yes, yeah, one of my treasures too, Bob. Uh, no, I am not. I am not a Club 33 member, but I am an artist who Club 33 members like a lot. So they will bring me in on a special occasion, a birthday, have a cup of coffee, have a tea, and ask me to tell stories or just visit or get to experience it. But as an artist, I'm very grateful that several Club 33 members have been that generous with me, and uh, I'm thankful for it. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how that all, pardon me, I don't know why I'm snorfully today, but I am. Anyway, uh, that's how that happens, is that's the way it works with the Club 33, is they, you know, kind of take care of each other. One of the things I loved about it was before the thing, if I if it was too crowded, uh, a Club 33 member would say, hey, Terry, if you're coming to the park today, I'm going to be having a, a drink at Club 33, you want to come and join me. And that's just decadent. <laughs> I'm just, I'm not going to lie. It's wonderful. And I really enjoyed it. And I, I, uh, it's fun. It's really fun. So thank you for that question. Uh, just texted you a promised picture for Bella and her grandmother. Yes. Hi, honey. I saw it. But Bella and her grandmother are usually on the Patreon tribal page. So I'm going to have to text it to her and then I'll show it to the tribe on Wednesday. Yeah. So good for you. Thank you. It looks beautiful. And uh, we'll do more on Wednesday. Do you need some fine dental tools? Do you work with a flame? Uh, I always need fine dental tools. I love them. In fact, my dentist loves to, you know, he, he loves the, uh, uh, he used to give me the broken ones. In fact, I tell people, if you like sculpting with dental tools before you buy them, ask your dentist um, because he could have a million broken ones, right? Right? I'd love some. Thank you. I love dental tools. That's what I use. 
In fact, I will, I'm having trouble with this lid screwing on, as you can tell. There we go. Yay. Okay. So here are some that I have. This is one of my, my favorite right here. It's got this little flat with the rounded on the end and then the reverse on this end. That's one of my favorite dental tools right there. Eep. I got a million of them. <laughs> I mean, I just love them. And the more the merrier because you never know what's going to be needed when you need it. And then I don't use a flame. No, I've seen people use a flame. It's too, too aggressive for me to use a flame. You may be better at it. Catherine, but I'm not. Uh, but what I do like to use is a hot waxer. So I have a unit that's a hot waxer and it has these really great little tips. Many waxers have the ones that go here, but then I got problems with these sides. So I have one that just is like that. And it does a lot of yummy stuff. Heat coming through the handle and well, the handle's not hot, but they're interchangeable little, little tips and stuff. And if you want to know more, um, I'm more than happy to share that with you on my AMA. Thank you. I would love some fine dental tools. Uh, Jenna says, I received the ghost pins. They are amazing. I didn't even know they arrived as my husband was like, oops, left, left your mail in the garage. For a few days. Oh, Janice. Oh, I feel it with you, girl. I feel it. My husband does the same thing. Didn't you have an Herbalife order? Yeah, did Herbalife get it? Oh, yeah, it's around the corner. He's adorable. He, they are adorable. But what a nice surprise, eh? You know, he goes, oh, yeah, you got some mail in the in the garage. Maybe they're there. <laughs> You're like, where are those? Well, I'm glad you got them, and I'm glad you love them. They are wonderful. Did you make it to West Berlin? Loved it there. Ah, uh, did I make it to West Berlin? I don't know if I could in 77. Something about Berlin meant that I might not have been able to go it there in 77. There were some places that were off limits and then the wall was up. I couldn't go, you know, couldn't get near the wall. Uh, it was too dangerous, patrolled, super dangerous. Oh my gosh. My mother was so worried that I was going to go do something with the Berlin wall. And then, um, so I, so no, um, I don't think I did. And then, um, Spain, I wanted to go to Spain because I'm a huge, um, Aronimus Bosch, not more painting Bosch. I mean, here, look at Bosch and Salvador Dali. We're talking about their own style. There's no way you're not going to know their style when you look at it, right? So Bosch and Dolly, again, how did they get there? What was their journey? Love, just love it, love it, love it, right? So um, I wanted to see Bosch and my mom said, no Spain or you're not going. I will make sure you don't go to Europe if you are going to go to Spain because there was battles there. There was war there. And the same with Ireland. Couldn't go to Ireland because they were fighting too. So I had to promise my mother because there were no, there were no smartphones. So uh, no way to get in touch with my mother. In fact, when I was in Austria, which was very close to the Berlin, Berlin, uh, it cost a thousand dollars a minute to call my parents. So I, uh, and you had to put in, a, you had to go to a special place request them to connect you with the u.s and you called and uh i basically said hi mom and dad it's your daughter i'm fine i'm alive goodbye <laughs> fastest i've ever talked <laughs> because i didn't want my dad and my dad didn't care he said i need to hear from my daughter i don't care if it's a thousand bucks so every week i would reach out to my parents it was probably one of the most expensive phone bills of all times it was not like now but back then it really cost a lot of money to use a telephone and to call to overseas and, you know, state to state, you know, all of that was really hard. And now it's, it's such a blessing that we don't have to worry so much about that. And we have this. Wow, guys. Magic, magic, magic. Claymore. Yes, the Claymore. Yes, indeed. Well done. Yes, yes. Two-handed sword or the claymores. My husband would say they're different and he can explain why. 
but uh, this is what I'm talking about. Just, oh my gosh. Do I have stories about my tour as a 19 year old, wide eyed, oh my God, I'm so glad to be out of the US girl. <laughs> Not because I didn't like the US, I love the US, but I love traveling. I've always wanted to meet people. One of my favorite places was going to Italy. I know, I said Rome's in Italy. Yeah, 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 I get it, get it. But I went to Venice. And uh, the youth hostel was on an island. And the next day there was a boat strike. So we were stranded on the island. And uh, I didn't know if I was going to get off it. And then I found out that during that time, a um, 100 lira was like a dime in U.S. money. So 100,000 lira, you see what I'm saying? Um, they would ask for 200 lira and it was two bucks in American. So it was very easy to get off the boat. And this just meant that the public transportation had a strike, but the little fishing boats all came around the island and would take you across for exorbitant prices. So instead of it being 10 cents, it was $2, you know, but we were happy. So just fascinating. I loved Italy when I was there. Very hard to get me out of Italy because Michelangelo world. So um, so it was hard. It was very hard. But there's other places I love too. Switzerland. Hello. Switzerland has got to be um, the Alps. I took the train through the Alps. And I was like, oh my Lord. <sighs> Whoa. You know, you feel like you're in a James Bond movie when you do that. And it, wow, it was just, it was stunning, guys. It was absolutely stunning. Not, I mean, wowie, wowie. So I love books. Yes, Robin. It's the one thing I have trouble releasing from my fingers and giving to other people. Um, but I'm getting better. I'm getting better. I'm getting better. Art books, forget about it. Oh, my Lord. And I have a book that I used when I was a kid uh, in high school called Stage Makeup. I think I've got like six copies of this book. You think I could unleash, let go of at least four. <laughs> but for some reason, I'm having trouble. So I don't know what that's about. Hi, Tim Gillette. How are you? <laughs> yeah. So that happens a lot. Well, my husband had books he liked and I had books I liked. And we both took stage makeup in college. So there's a book that you get that's called Stage Makeup. You'll see it. You'd recognize it if you've done any theater whatsoever. And I have, I think I must have six copies of this. I have the the, the first edition, then I have the second edition, and I have the, you must have the next edition. <laughs> I don't know. I should part with some of them. And if I do, uh, yeah, a nice library could probably use them because they're great books. They're great books. That's why I've got my little paws on them going, I don't want to let go of them. I don't want to let go of them. Uh, but I don't know why. It's so, it's so bizarre. So bizarre. So bizarre. Ghost pins are great. Thank you, Deanna. They are. And they are, what makes them super great is they are affordable. So if you can't adopt my larger investment black light ghosts or my other investment illuminating ghosts, you can invest in a pin or two or 10, whatever you want. Okay. Um, you can do that. And, uh, that's the gambit that I like. I like to have a gambit where if you've got a couple of bucks, you can have something that's very popular like the ghosts. And if you really want to invest, invest in true art, which is what my illuminating ones are, then you can do that too. And let me tell you the resale value on, um, these illuminating ghosts is going to be huge. Uh, the nice thing is you won't part with them. And that's one of the reasons that the investment would be if people were trying to buy in it after they sell out, you know, a year or two down the line, they're going to sell for more because people don't want to give them up unless they have to. That's what happened with my jewels of the park. My jewels of the park were highly limited. They were introduced at the gallery at Disneyland when there was a gallery and not a princess suite. 
and people bought them up, but it, it wasn't, hi, hon. It wasn't like, oh my goodness, look, he brought me a coffee. Look, a coffee. My husband brought me a coffee and he made a design in it too. <gasps> Let me try it. Oh, that is so good. Oh, his newfound thing with these with these cappuccinos and these 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 espressos, unbelievable. Mm. Oh Lord, is that good? Lord, is that oh Lord, is that good? Let me sit it there and just love on it a bit. Thank you, thank you, Deanna, and thank you, Lindsay, for <laughs> amazing, amazing cup of coffee. Mmm. Wow. It's really good. He's getting very good. He's getting very, very good with his work. I only hope my future paintings will advance as quickly as his coffee seems to be doing. They are absolutely grin grinning delicious. Grin grinning Tracy says, I was there in 85, trained from Frankfurt to Berlin, had to go through East, was able to enter East Berlin. It was like walking into black, white movies, soldiers, machine guns. I love the hostels. Yeah. So, so I was there in 77, the Queen's Silver Jubilee. Seriously, who would have thought the same queen would be there today? And I'm so glad she is. Uh, the Silver Jubilee, I will say, uh, I, I still have the cup somewhere. And um, oh my goodness, I, I really wanted to see all the spectacle because, you know, Great Britain as a royal family. How cool is it to have a queen and a princess and a prince and a king at times? I don't know. I thought this was, you know, someone who loves swords. This just goes to reason, right? Stood by the gates, watched the whole procession. Thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen. And uh, that's why I went. 77, we, we three of us, you know, ragtag band of people just went. We cruised down the Rhine River. We... We, we did not get to see Berlin uh, because of the wall. And my mother was like, don't you dare go near there. So we didn't. I, I followed the rules. I did not want my parents to be over in the U.S. worried about their crazy daughter leaping and jumping and happily experiencing uh, Europe. Man, was it great, though. Oof. Wow. I went to Stonehenge and could walk Stonehenge. They did not have it separated from me. I actually could walk and touch the stones and pose next to the stones and see the little pots around the edge. And Oh, my God. I loved it. Just loved it. What a great opportunity. So much fun here. Did you get to Scotland too? No, couldn't. Uh, yes. Edinburgh. I did. In fact, I could not understand anything of what they were saying. My husband is a piper. Ah, so, I'm, so is mine. And my girls were dancers. Oh, I love it. Highland games are great family fun. I want to be part of the tribe. Heading to Patreon. Oh, I'd love for you to be part of the tribe. Uh, Patreon.com slash Terry Harden is where you go to be part of the tribe. I would love that. My husband is a piper too. That's how he won my heart. I love the bagpipes. Oh. In fact, on uh, one of our anniversaries, we spent it up at Big Bear and my husband um, played Amazing Grace, among other beautiful tunes, uh, on New Year's Eve. And he played Happy Birthday on January 31st for those who had January 31st birthdays at the bed and breakfast we were at. And then he played Happy Birthday for those whose birthday was July 1, uh, January 1. I love them. In fact, if you if your husband is still a piper, I would love it if you would talk to me about reeds. Okay, he has been having trouble getting reeds for his pipes. He actually got them when he was a young man still in college and he bought them in uh Scotland, I believe. And uh he uh 
uh, could not fly back with them on the plane because they are war pipes. So they had to fly separate from my husband because they were um, Highland war pipes. So I love, love, love to hear more about that, sweetheart, especially if you can tell me now in the real world how to get reads for such a place. Maybe we can put our husbands together and let them have that wonderful chat because I'd love to hear the pipes. I haven't heard them in a while. My husband's not even sure he can play them anymore because he's been working so hard to find the reads. But uh, I'm grateful. And he has a heart condition, so he has to be kind of careful. But I would love to see that. And uh, Highland Dancing. But I, but I went to Scotland. In fact, I went to Edinburgh and I stayed at the Edinburgh Castle where Nessie Pond is. So I learned about Nessie and uh, and kept looking, hoping she'd show herself, but she never did. And then I loved Edinburgh. That was one of my favorite places because they have a statue there that celebrates a dog who sat on the grave until... So the owner of this lovely Scottish terrier had an owner who died and they buried the owner and the dog would not leave the grave. So people of the town of Edinburgh fed that dog and took care of that dog until that dog died and was buried next to the owner. And then a statue was erected for loyalty, love, a uh, man's best friend, loving that man. So I got all choked up and took pictures and absolutely I'm crazy for Edinburgh. So yes, I did get to Scotland. Love, love, love Scotland. So I would love to have you, Catherine. Love to have you be part of this and share your painting. We'll share our painting. And then you'll see Johnny's painting. And then you'll see Ron, how Ron Gabala paints. He paints really good too. And there's all kinds of amazing painters on this thing. So you will love it. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. That's all I have to say. David Lewis says, gotta love the old phone booths in the at the exit of Circle Vision, Disneyland Tomorrowland from the early days. Or my childhood, David. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. You have to love them. You are so cute, David. Ah, uh, coffee time. Ha ha. That was sweet of him. Yes. He is my knight in shining armor. Seriously. Um, we used to do the Renaissance Fair together, and he was one of the queen's habadiers. He, he wheeled a sword very well. Uh, sword fought. And, yeah, he's a good guy. I'll have to show you. I'll have to show you a picture of his young. Remind me for Friday, and I'll I'll be sure and do that. Mind me on Friday. I'll make it happen. Terry's arm husband made an appearance. LOL. Yes, his arm made an appearance. Yeah, yeah. He he's not an on camera kind of a guy. He loves to be uh, behind the camera. And I appreciate him more than he'll ever know. Ooh, that coffee is so good. Woo, so good. It's not real. It's the thing is, is when the beans are right, the technique is good and everything comes together. It's the first coffee I've ever had where the flavor balances change the more you drink the coffee. And then the notes, that's what they call them, notes, uh, food notes at the end of the cup are quite musical. I think Remy, I think little Remy would have very much enjoyed coffee had it been like that. What say you, Remy? Yes, because you do love food. I know, I know. We'll have to have you try coffee. What do you think? I think you should. I know you like wine. Get back over here. <laughs> but chefs, you know, they're all about all those different, different things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We are all coming over for a cup. I will. Tracy, he seems to maybe be watching us today. So that's really sweet of him. I have been binge watching documentary documentaries on the Royal family. I, me too. I got to tell you that after watching the crown, which I liked very much this season because Jillian Anderson playing Margaret Thatcher was not to be believed. I just thought she was so good. Loved her in X-Files. And then in this one, I was like, oh my God, that is fabulous. Um, yeah, she, she, that, that, that like you, I started to, to troll all of my, um, my, uh, uh, streaming channels to see if I could find Royal family documentaries. 
because they are quite private, aren't they? They're very, very private. You remember Spitting Image that uh, originated out of London and uh, and they, they depicted the royal family with these sort of grotesque puppets? That was a kick too. Just amazing. I, the royal, some of the royal family thought it was funny. Many did not. Uh, you were an exchange student. Well, Tracy, see, you did it right. I was not. I just went. Said, want to go? Went. I would love to take a year and travel to Europe. Yeah, yeah. But if not, do it in little inter increments. Don't do it in a year. Just bounce over there, see a couple places, come back, save up, bounce back over. You know, that's what's so wonderful about it. Yeah, it's 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 wonderful. And you just never know who you're going to see, who you're going to meet, that you're going to run into and uh, and get to be friends with who's going to say, hey, man, let me let me show you around. Let me tell you about it. And there's nothing better about learning about a person's country from someone who lives there. That's what I love. You know, this is why Epcot is one of my favorite. I can talk to Norwegians about Norway. I can talk to Japanese about Japan, Chinese about China, French about France. You know, I love it. I love it. And uh, I hope they never change it in Epcot because just bringing these people over so that I can talk to them about their native land is so wonderful. It's such a brilliant idea. Thank you, Disney. I love it. Love it. Amazing grace on the bagpipes always makes me cry. So beautiful. Yeah. My husband's not a fan. <laughs> Because he has to play it all the time. Everybody wants him to play it. Everybody wants him to play it. He doesn't mind playing it, but there's so many other things. He's a real uh, aficionado when it comes to this kind of music. And so he will often play Amazing Grace for those of us who knew Amazing Grace as our introduction to the pipes. Again, Catherine's husband would probably agree if he was he was here. But then he will enter something else that's in there that he wants you to see. Uh, he wants to you to experience, and it's just a beautiful, it's just a beautiful experience. I love the pipes. Uh, in the beginning, when my husband was practicing, it was like he was sort of you know killing a goose, but he just kept up and he just kept going, and uh, he plays them beautifully. I I think so anyway. But then he will say it's because you're my wife. It's not true. He really does play it beautifully. My stepfather wanted to play the bagpipes, but he had blown eardrum and he couldn't do it. Yes. And you have to be careful. However, um, <laughs> Catherine will tell you, as will her husband, maybe Catherine not herself, but through her husband, will tell you there's all, there's different pipes now that you don't necessarily have to work so hard on your, with your own lungs as a combination with the arm. And it, uh, it's, it's just amazing. He showed me some pipes that's more of the, the arm working and the, the wind working and the, the, I forget what they're called, but they're tinier and uh, a lot more expensive, but they are easier on the body. So that's kind of cool. Yes. I'll ask him. He knows reads. I would love it. I would so love it. And I know my husband would too. So thank you. So what are we doing here, guys? When we have something that we would like to have and somebody shares like Catherine did, you ask. They can always say no. But if you've been generous with your stuff, time, whatever, then they will help if they can. It's, it's, it's really wonderful that that's the opportunity. And who knows, maybe somebody here uh, is really a, a coffee aficionado and they might offer some of their good, good, good statements and stuff. And, uh, you know, so, I mean, it's wonderful. And thank you. I really appreciate that, Catherine. Uh, Gray Friars Bobby. Yes. Love it. Yes, yes. Barbara Van Deesen, well, how nice to see you, my love. This is a nice, pleasant surprise. Thank you for joining us. I'm really excited about that. Uh, you guys have just really blown me away today, as you usually do. Uh, I, I start out by saying, what am I going to put on my thumbnail so you guys know what it looks like? What are we going to talk about Sundays? It's my family day. So I am more of a laid back. I don't look at my phone on Sundays. I don't do a lot of interacting on Sundays because it's my family day. So I really devote it to my husband and my little dog. Yesterday 
we watched uh, uh, Peaky Blinders. That show is amazing. Very interesting. Very scary. And so many flavors. So I just saw this and it's like seven, eight seasons long. Those of you who are aficionados of this show will be like, hey, where have you been? But I am blown away by uh, one of the things that's nice when you stumble on a show like this that's like mega seasons. You're curious as to what keeps it fresh, what makes people keep tuning in. And one of the things is the depth and color, if you will, speaking like an artist, of the different um, characters. And in this one, never a dull moment. Even characters you think you know surprise you in that series. And I am now in season four, I think, and I can't get enough of it. But then I'm a Godfather fan. So one of you said, uh, well, how about this one? And I said, okay, I'm checking it out. And I did. My husband said the same thing. And it's really excellent. It just, it just, it's got me. It has me at hello. It's really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, ceramic I made that I sent you in the pic. I was glad you could tell me it was a horse. Yes, Tracy, it is so cute. It is so adorable. And ceramics are one of those things that is not simple and necessarily easy. Okay, here's why. Ceramics have to be uh, in a kiln and must be baked. And if you don't do the process properly, or you forget and there's an air bubble inside, you know what I'm going to say, it will explode and shatter into a gazillion pieces, okay? I know because mine did um, <laughs> when I was doing my, my version of this class. Uh, I don't do a lot of ceramics. One of the things I like about ceramics is when they're different and unusual. And when I saw yours, I thought what was really super about it was your choice of color. Um, your choice of shape. I, I thought it was wonderful. I really did. And uh, you're right. I could tell it was a horse. So, um, you know, don't ever, even if you can't tell what it is, all right, uh, it's the fact that you started and you played. I mean, you really embraced the medium by really having fun with the glazes. It wasn't a basic glaze, like out of the bottle. It looked like a glaze you may have mixed or the teacher suggested because you, you liked that color. So I was impressed with that. I was impressed with the pose. Um, and there was a lot I liked about it. And it's a very simple piece, but so what? right? So what? Uh, many people will create something and then not fire it. And that makes it very fragile. And I have a piece when I was at the Renaissance Fair, there was a guy who used to sculpt these little gnomes, these little garden um, creatures. And he just let them dry in the sun. And I asked him for one at the Renaissance Fair and he gave it to me. I still have it. And when you think about Lindsay and I being in college, 19, 20 years old, and I'm now 63, that thing is over 40 years old. So feel free to ask me about stuff. I also have my son's first ceramic that we absolutely love. And uh, it's in the display case with my sculptures. I always point it out. This is my son's, not mine. So um, I love that. The beginning stuff is super cool. In fact, what I should do is open up some of my early portfolios, which I do have, and show you some of my early stuff. So you can kind of see what I drew in college, how I drew it, what are some of the processes I went through. The off, I did a, a sketch of, I used to do uh, dots. I, that's how I used to draw, is I used to do a sketch and then I would fill it all in with dots. I would do it with dots, just taking a pen and going, ding, 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 ding. Like took hours, took hours, but I love doing it and the accumulation of dots, making it darker and the pulling them apart, making it lighter. Spreading them out is what I mean. But I'll show you some of that stuff. I'll show you, I'll show you uh, my, my journey because up until all the way through high school, I did, I, I was never taught art. Okay. I was taught art, but not taught art. 
then in high school, I actually took some classes and, uh, I mean, in college I took classes. So from high school to, uh, college, I wanted to go to art center. Art center said I had a lot of talent, but no training. And I needed to get training before I could even get anywhere near art center. And, uh, I got upset because I was very proud about being self-taught. They did not care. And uh, once I did it, uh, once I was in my junior colleges doing it, then the need to go to art center w- disappeared. Uh, I was pulled in other directions. So sometimes your journey, your path takes you places like a leaf on the water. You just kind of float and see where it's going to take you. So it's kind of cool. Um, I, but I did. I thought it was cute, your little horse. Uh, Tracy's. I've been doing my ancestry. Would love to visit towns where my DNA came from. Yeah. Yes, that's a great idea. How fun is that? My mother is in a um, convalescent hospital. I think I mentioned this before. and uh, But before then, we took a road trip, she and I. And we drove to the little town where she's from in Oregon. And we went to see if her house was still there. And it was not. It was now bowled over and ended up being a gas station, I think. Can't remember. But she knew the area. She got that tingly tingle of the area because there were still uh, towers over across the street. And she remembers her father crossing the street to get to the towers uh, to go to work like they were oil towers and maybe did an oil rig or something. Anyway, it was really neat to experience that with my mother. My, My father's side, my grandfather built his house and I know my grandfather's side of the family a lot more in a lot more detail than I know my mother's side of the family. And um, so this DNA journey that you're doing, Tracy, is very exciting. And uh, I wish you well with it. My parents don't really like to talk about the past too much. However, you got to catch them. You know, they start to talk about it, but they don't realize they're talking about it. They're in their 80s. So my dad will tell me a story and I make sure I either rewrite it down or I I kind of say, let me turn my phone off so that I can listen to you without interruption and I turn on the recorder and record it. Yeah, I do. Because uh, sometimes your parents will give you surprises. (laughs) Terry, my Herbalife came today. Yay! I haven't had any more for two weeks. They said it was due to the COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything delayed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. It's true. My dad is so sweet because he's like, I don't need any more Herbalife. And then I'll say, dad, because one of the things that's great about Herbalife or whatever you use, but I'm going to say Herbalife because Herbalife is my, my choice. I like it because Um, although I have these quick shakes, most of the time I'm drinking an Herbalife shake. It's just, these are good as backup when I don't feel like making the shake or I can't because I'm on in five minutes. But, um, here's my tea right here, my Herbalife tea. So you can see it says Herbalife. Seriously. I am, uh, uh, I love Herbalife products. Anyway, this isn't a commercial for Herbalife, but for my father, my father being in his eighties, And I don't know if you've noticed this about your parents, but parents, when they get to be a people, when they start to get older in life, don't necessarily eat a lot. Okay. So my father was getting to the point where he was eating maybe a decent breakfast and then, and then he was eating an okay lunch, but at dinner he wouldn't eat anything. So he started to drop weight really quickly and it terrified his doctors. They thought there was something wrong with him. The fact of the matter was he wasn't eating. So Herbalife makes a product called Herbalife 24. It's made mostly for athletes to build muscles and to aid in their stamina by hydrating the muscles in a certain way that because most of the people a lot of the people that do Herbalife are high-end athletes. We have a ton of athletes that are involved with Herbalife. Not that we uh, Herbalife becomes a sponsor because the athletes all use and love the product, not the other way around in many cases. 
So the soccer team, for instance, the Galaxy, is it the Galaxy? Uh, we, uh, Herbalife approached them because they all love Herbalife and they were sponsored by Herbalife. So now they're the Herbalife. You'll see the Herbalife across their shirts and they've won some, um, you know, national awards after having the Herbalife because it, it's so great for people. It's a, it's one way to be healthy and I like it because it's simple, easy, fast. My only challenge is I use the mornings to make my shakes and I'm here early to do my broadcast. So I don't necessarily get to do that shake. That's when I jump to this little protein shake, uh, to hold me over till I can make my Herbalife shake. Not as good, but it, pre-mixed. So, uh, that way I don't skip a meal. Um, but my dad was skipping meals. And so what I do for my dad is I get him rebuild strength, which is a canister about this big. And it, it is a drink you drink to help build muscle. So for my dad, what I do is I ask him to make it like a chocolate milk. They now have strawberry shortcake, which he likes better, by the way. And he makes it into a chocolate milk, and then he'll drink that at night instead of a meal. It gives him it gives him the calories that he needs. Oh, and speaking of which, he's calling me now. His ears must have been burning, my father. Um, but the the by drinking this at night like a chocolate milk, he doesn't have to eat and it tastes chocolatey or like strawberry shortcake or another flavor. And the minute I got him in the routine of doing that, he was able to keep his weight. And all of a sudden they realized his doctors that he was not eating. And he told them about having this drink and this drink helps him to maintain his weight. So uh, with athletes, it helps build muscle. With my father being in his 80s, he still exercises, but it allows him to have the calories he needs when he's not hungry. It's a great alternative to make sure your caloric content that your body needs to sustain itself is good. So that's one of the reasons I like it because you can do a couple shakes a day. It's going to give you... Uh, uh, it's going to give you uh, 2,000 calories of nutrition in about 200 calories of, of, of food. And it's all stuff that your body needs. So for me, this is a great product. Okay. You may disagree. You may go a different way. But for me, it's been the best I can, you know. One of the things that's more challenging with them lately is that they used to have these little envelopes of of drink and they have the instant flavor, but it's in a flavor I'm not real keen on. They have all these great flavors, but this one particular flavor they've chosen to do is one that I don't like very much. So I'm kind of torn when traveling, but I haven't had to worry about that during COVID. So I've got to drink the flavor shake that I like and uh, it's all good. So yeah, so I'm so glad Bob, your Herbalife came. I always like the idea of a cartoon where they raise bagpipes like sheep. <laughs> Bob, that's a visual. I think that's adorable. I would run with that, buddy. Yeah, I would. I would jump on that one. Jump on that one, baby. Jump on that one. That's awesome. Well, everyone, it has been the two hour, 47 minute mark. So I am going to bid you adieu. I am so excited. I cannot continue to thank you for commenting. I'm having so much fun. It feels so much more like a conversation. I love you for doing it. I love for you raising the questions. I love for you responding. Um, I stand up and I salute you. I just think I want to thank you so, 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 so much. If you have not subscribed and you enjoyed any portion of today, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, it's important. Uh, YouTube is new to me. So right now, all I'm doing are my lives because I'm very, 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 uh, well, a little technically challenged, I'm going to admit. And also uh, very, very, very wrapped up in making sure that those of you who have ordered the ghosts have the ghosts and, um, and things like that. So I'm a very busy lady. And uh, I want to make sure that at least you can count on my lives every Monday and Friday 
and then on Wednesday, the Zoom call. So uh, if you're a part of the tribe. So I highly encourage you to go to Patreon and be a part of the tribe. Your voice matters. So, uh, you know, um, the $5 is important. So I show up <laughs> per month. Makes me show up when I'm super busy. I go, they're paying, get in there. Uh, makes me disciplined, helps with my discipline. But more importantly, it really is good. I over deliver, I really do. And uh, I'd love to have you as part of the group. So please join it, share it with your friends, anyone who wants to have a conversation, especially feel upbeat and good. It's it's a lot like this, except for that you get to talk back and we we have a little breakfast or a little dinner and we talk about what's going on. So, and it's all levels and it's private. Okay. It doesn't go out into the universe. Okay. Cause, uh, sometimes you don't want it to. Right. Okay. So I love you guys. And here, here Kez is over too soon. I love you for that. We are almost at three hours. <laughs> Seriously. There's a little clock, uh, up here and it's telling me how long it's been. I love that you think it's too soon. You are a doll. Thank you for making me feel so good, all of you today. Take care being with you. Thank you so much. Friday is the AMA. Um, ask me anything. So you can get your questions in early and just tag Leo Holzer. You can message me and I can send them on up to Leo. Or you can just wait till Friday and add them to the ones that Leo sends me, okay? So I love you guys. I want to thank you. You have a lovely week. It's really super exciting that Disneyland in before you know it will be open and you'll all be showing me and telling me what it's like and everything. We'll talk about it more. This is not the last time we're going to talk about Disneyland. I love you. Do something nice for someone else. It'll make you feel so much better. Love you. Hugs. We'll talk to you soon.